Who wants to sing us in? We could do the seminal, we could do the new England football chant. What's that? You know, the, uh, the Truly Madly Deeply song. No, what? What one was that? I'll be your dream, I'll be your wish, I'll be your fantasy. <laughs> I'll be your hope, I'll be your love, be everything that you need. I love you more, I love you more, truly, madly, deeply do. I will be strong, I will be faithful, cause I'm counting on a new beginning. A reason for living, a deeper me. I do, there's a way, yeah. It's I wanna stay whoa, whoa, whoa. with you on a mountain. <laughs> I want to bathe with you in the sea. I want to lay like this forever. Until the sky falls horrible. down this is on me. I'm like the lie. geezer, the fucking bloke on the fruit machines, glassed about four people while that's going on. The old boy with his regular seat, he's crying into his bitter. Barman, he's rung the fucking bell. Three pints for everyone. Do you know what I mean? Pub's going nuts. Everyone's in bits. It's Euro 2021. Let's go, baby. You know when white baby. English people, you know when white English people talk like that, I feel like they're talking another language. Yeah, it's like compl- it's like hieroglyphs to me. No, it's like a dialect. It's like patois. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, basically- it's like it's like it's, it's, it's like no. Caucasian patois. It's, it's basically patois. <laughs> yeah, it's Caucasian patois. It's Caucasian patois. Well, listen, Cockneys are a culture. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you, yeah, don't, it is. If you, don't, if you don't want to move here, then you've got to get with it. Do you know what I mean? For real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll put my phone down the cane navel and I'll go up the apples and pears. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You only, you only got the trouble and, 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 and that guy's what? Butter and bread, is it? Is he is he dead? Bro, but, oh, <laughs> butter and oh, bread, hello. dead. Fucking hell, here we are. Third cray twin. Yeah, exactly, boat race man. face. Um, is that a thing? Boat yeah, race. boat race face. You've got a nice boat. She's boat race boat. face. Oh, yeah. All yeah. Right, I hear that. This could and terribly end. Oh, I said you were. Oh, fucking hell, lads. I beg. I beg. I beg. Blowing your eardrum. Oh, Killing did, me. Should we do that again? That's dog a good song, though. I could have checked it on the dog and bone. I with you on a mountain. Do you know what it is, yeah? I remember there's one song that used to play in pubs all the time, yeah? And I don't know who sung it. And it used to go like, What a do, 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 I hate that song, though. It's horrible. To the left, to the right, push on a ball, smack a bike. I do, 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 push by a ball, shake a tree. That is so like when you go to when you go to Ali Paddy Darts, that sometimes that comes on. The, no, the one that always comes on at um, Darts is. Uh... Come on, Eileen. Oh, no. Oh yeah, come on, Eileen. Please don't take me home. No. I want to stay here. God, I go drinking darts, all like... the beer. Well, you proper fuck that. No. <laughs> What's the dart song? What's the dart song? And it became super funny, super super. Slide to the left. It's definitely slide song. to the right. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Oi, oi, oi. I went to the darts dressed as uh, the darts dressed as uh, six sharks and Pamela Anderson. Yeah, and we got the only black guy that we went with to be Pamela Anderson because it's obviously ironic that you lot can't swim. Yeah. Jesus, wow. No, okay. If that's how I we're starting, mean. if that's how we're starting, Jesus. I'm not gonna lie though. I'll, I'll never forget the face of my black mates when I told them I was going darts once. They were like, yeah, same. <laughs> but you know what? I, I, I just they were um, looking at me like, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. You lot, are, you, you, lot are, you lot are yet to start competing. To be fair, it's quite a white dominated sport. It's we're super right. white. There's no diversity right. in dots. I mean, they even let like the but white I'm, women I'm in that sport that. before they let the so in. There's a couple Turks about. You know what I mean, they're back. They're close. Where? To where are they? they? There's one Austrian. German, it's all the same. Isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I but um, I um, I, rem- I remember one year I went to darts right, um, at Ali Pali. And uh, it was the funniest thing ever because it's my first time going. Um, this better be the funniest thing ever, by the way. Because <laughs> no, so when, when people say that shit things. and it, they don't deliver, no, no pressure, it was though. so funny, right? So basically, <gasps> said twice now. Twice. So we went, we went as elves, whatever. I was a bit, was a bit weird, but we went. Oh, as so elves. just normal elves height for you, show. yeah? Huh? Normal height for you? Wow. <laughs> Wow. Don't bite. I'm don't, gonna bite. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going my story. <laughs> Stay strong, Zab. Um and then pe- and, pe- and people went as uh, minions, right? And okay. these these minions got so drunk they end up fighting each other. No and way. then one by one, every time you look behind, there was like one less minion and one less minion. And then and then Mad. there was like three left and they were having a rumble in the in the crack. So we were like on the tables and then you got the stands around it, the seats around it. They had a fight, and all you see is a guy dressed as Jesus coming over, like doing the peace sign, <laughs> like to try and calm it down. It was the hell. And, and imagine that, yeah. And you're like, you're, you know how many beers you drink at 
dark, it's like it's excessive. It's a lot of yeah, they don't do whiskey at these things enough. They nah. do the like, spirits. They do the they, spirits. Yeah, but like you have to go in that yeah, corner. Like it's just not as easy yeah. to get. Yeah, like anyway, that's one thing I'm looking forward to this year, man. Like hopefully. Ali Pali would be cool December this oh, year I, I think yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm actually looking, looking forward to that annoying thing is I think yeah we missed it 2019 for mm. whatever reason that's when I went um, 2021 I think it's old oh, boy. Dude, yeah. so, I think it's so old I think I went I went 20, 2018 and 2019 yeah I believe we we probably in this oh yeah but to be honest there's no, loads, there's done, loads of nights different dates as well we went on a Friday yeah, so, yeah, we, so, we, so we so we would have went on a Friday oh, okay. night opening, so we yeah. would have gone on I think we went on like on a Thursday once and then like on a Wednesday yeah and it was just so hilarious. we stay in the most budget hotel yeah as well <laughs> like I, I, I forgot that no we no we stay in the hotel next to work so what what when I was at um my previous shop okay in Canary Wharf yeah. we used to all stay in this hotel I forgot the name of it but it's like it's Canary Wharf but it's like you got to go over the river it's okay. like Ends Canary Wharf, oh, yeah. okay, and um, it's like so West India Key or some shit. Yeah, one of them, yeah. Man. So yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. it's so funny because we go there just because it's cheap, but also just how trash it is. Like just it's that like banter, you know Happy what I mean? Days. We just go there, we get dead pizza offers from the from the oh, yeah, like, service and whatnot, have yeah. beers offers in it. And I remember once um, there was this guy. I don't know where he's from, but this how you know it's this ghetto. He was like, "Yes, yeah, so I have a business meeting, so I want to book a hotel room." He's with a girl who's clearly a hooker. Very nice. Right. And then he's basically asking, can I pay it? Can I pay a, I don't want to stay over the whole day because my meeting's only for a couple of hours. Can I just like book a room for like they two were. hours? And um, they were like, no, you, you can't do that. Like you, you have to book a room for the day. <laughs> and he was just like, but I don't understand. Like I'm only here for a couple of hours, my flight soon. And there's, there's a woman next to him with netted. He's in a suit and whatnot. Like a, the baggy, <laughs> the, ba is, the baggy is suit. The baggy is suit. Why yeah? is that the hotel's problem though? Listen, the baggy is suit. Yeah. <laughs> and um and he's next to a next he's next to a bird with like netted um tights is it netted Stockings. tights like netted no you know the tights is like nets. I'll be behind that hotel front desk like it's tights. above me now it's I'll, I'll be I'll be I'll bro be this hotel the, has it's no, above me bro also, can you imagine if they took the payment and then and then he was like right, but I only need it for the afternoon fine convince him to pay da, 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 da. he pays and they're like actually check ins at four o'clock so you got to kind of yeah but it's <laughs> you're about three hours away probably. yeah but it's, it's crazy because um that hotel I'll get the name of it but that hotel doesn't have um windows. What do you mean it doesn't have windows? My room never had windows, bro. What? Oh, my days. Bro, the hotel never had windows, bro. This is the bando. The bando. <laughs> the bando. The bando, baby. The bando. This, um, this reminds me, I finished industry. I was late to the party. Oh, you finished that quick, boy? Yeah, bro. Um, first of all, first of all, shout out Yasmin. Amen. You're, you're psycho. Amen. Big up Yasmin. Um, but shout, Big up Yasmin. shout out the actress. Um, even Harper, little firecracker you. Amen. Um, Harper gets on my nerves though, man. She always looks, Harper's the, the black girl, right? Yeah. She always looks like, her, she's got that sort of like look on her face. That's like, there's a look on some people's face and you're like, what's wrong? Like, or what's up? It she just always, always looks, looks troubled. Yeah, even when she's not. She's troubled as fuck though. She's troubled, but like, even when she's not troubled, it's just like a look on her face. That's she's, like, she's got a pretty like weird lack of eyebrow. Anybody notice that? Yeah, so I'm not going to lie. That's one of the reasons that I identify with Harper most as a character. Yeah. One, because of my lack of eyebrows but no also, but yours i think you got stronger ones than no you got I mean, stronger ones are, than her these are fucking microbladed like my actual eyebrows went five years ago right yeah but oh, i didn't know that do yeah, people, yeah. people, people lose do people lose eyebrows yeah i, I got alopecia in it oh do you yeah, yeah, yeah i never knew that yes that's what johnny's zav zav there. johnny no, I didn't know that. My mum, my mum's got alopecia. So as well. it all grew nice back, and, and most of it grew back. But the eyebrows, these are these are Harley Street baby. I didn't, I didn't know that at all. For real, we'll yeah, talk, yeah. we'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah, yeah, Wonderful. yeah but whatever. But anyway, I, Harper's a character I relate to most because she's got the story most similar to mine. So I actually, I, I liked Harper quite a lot. So she, she's got the she's got the moody educational background, which I can relate to. Tattoos on her titties. Also got tattoos on my titties. Okay. Um, yeah. She she had the whole close relationship with the MD who helped her out, da -da -da, and then she stayed loyal to despite like. Da -da -da -da. But she, she shout out Eric, man. Eric seemed like Eric, a G. Like, Eric, he fucked like, it up, but I, yeah. I, I think I think Harper was the character I related to most as an outsider. Da -da -da, Black. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Funny accent. Funny accent. Most people don't sound like us on the trading floor. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. So like, yeah, I, I relate to Harper. I like her, man. She got a lot of stick as a character. But also, like, that poor ginger boy has just been absolutely torn apart by Yasmin. He's well out of his league. Yeah, to be fair. Did they ever get to the bottom of it? First of all, I did think that Harper was, like, from... Uh, I, I, Har Harper was under my... I thought she was cute, to be fair. But she doesn't shave her armpits, and that's not really my thing. She What? Wait, in the show or in real life? In real life, so I just... Oh, you've done like, the what? IG checkup. Oh, oh, he's I, done the due diligence. I've done the due diligence. <laughs> <laughs> that's mad chat. Yeah, so... Um, 
But I actually like Harper a lot. Like I was, she didn't take the conventional route and stuff. Like I, I rated that and she had to work twice. She did work twice as hard. Amen. But I just, I think just from an ethical standpoint. I she lied agree. though. She's going to get caught out. Season two, she she lied on her CV, She's going to get right? caught out. But the what transcript I'm trying to say, shit. Well, we're not really what, it though, right? But what Eric I'm trying to say is, yeah, it. from an ethical standpoint, I just didn't yeah. appreciate her approach to hiding that trade. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just, I'd, maybe I was taking my job too seriously, yeah, or maybe yeah, just yeah. in general, but like, you just can't do those things. Like, yeah, if you're wrong, oh, yeah, you put your hand up. That. It frustrated so much. I felt like calling the HR. But you know, you know, it's based on, um, you know, it's based on JP Morgan. <laughs> you felt like calling up. Is it uh, it's, it's based on two interns that were at JP Morgan. And what's the name of that? What's the name of that firm called again? Peerpoint. Peerpoint. So JP. The P stands for PeerPoint. Okay. So that's the kind of thing that relieved me about this show. Cause like, I don't know about you, but like I've had fucking years of people being like, is what you do like, is it like Wolf of Wall Street? And I'm like, yeah, I get no, it all the time. No, I'm not an equity broker. I'm not a broker of any sort. Um, like their sheets. life is infinitely more fun than the shit that I have to deal with. Mm. I fucking wish my life was like Wolf of Wall Street. I wish I had a circus in on the floor. Right. But it's not. And then people are like, oh, if it's not a Wolf of Wall Street, is it like Wall Street? And like, no, again, I'm not in M&A. That's not my bag. And then the people were like, is it like American Psycho? And I'm like, if you keep asking me questions, I might go fucking Christian Bale on you. But no, it's not like American Psycho either. So thank fuck industry came out because it's actually the closest to what we yeah, do. Well, it's actually very was, realistic. Yeah, I was really looking point. forward to perpetuating some very strong stereotypes about white people's use of recreational drugs. And then Harper had to go and sniff a line, didn't she? Mm. I mean, fucking hell. There's she should have because the bloke is still doing smack. She should have just chilled with the. Um, she should have just chilled with the marijuana. Do you know what I mean, fucking hell, bro. Anyway, anyway, this kid and terribly episode thirteen. You are now in tune with man like um, Abby Ade. Man like Abby. Hi, I'm Johnny. Big up everybody who's been listening to us until this point. This is episode thirteen, the one before fourteen, the one after twelve. Quick maths. Quick maths. Um, shout out to everybody who sent us love on episode 12. Not an episode that we felt like we really wanted to record, but something that we definitely had to. It's a shame that we had to, but it is what it is. Big up to everybody who sent love. Um, big up to everybody who who even messaged us and said that, you know, they were making a commitment to themselves to make sure that they do better. Amen. We are close. We are close to being able to leave our house. Soon. So close. In fact, by the time this comes out, I swear. we're allowed to be in people's gardens in that. So maybe we should give like a congratulations. You are now free to mix households. Congratulations, at, Shayla. And you can go to the park. Yeah, the Apparently park. it's going to be warm next week as well. Like. Hey. Yeah, I mean, shorts but, um, next week. No, 19 sure. degrees is my chat. That's still cold, by the way. But this time but last shout year, out, shorts, actually. But no. shout out to the Instagram fam, the very small YouTube fam, the SoundCloud fam, wherever you are listening to us, if you've heard about us from a friend, if you are a freaking religious listener since episode one, shout out you shout in particular. You. You've seen the growth. You've seen the growth. That's right. And shout, shout out all these other podcasts who need guests, yeah, to make their things entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shout out them too. There's space for you as well. Hashtag no, stay humble. I don't know why I'm on this crud. Um, <laughs> but without further ado, Johnny and Xavi, how are you, man? I'm all right, man. I'm all right. He always does that. I'm all right, man. He goes really high like he's lying. Yeah, I'm fucking broken, man. <laughs> fucking bro, I'm just so done. No, I'm joking. I'm all right, man. I'm cool. Like, it's just there's just not a lot to report. Like, life is about to start again soon. We're gonna be allowed out of our house. Mm. We can all start doing crud. Um, like, I can get some kind of emotional joy beyond changing the color on my hue lights. Plug. Um, shout out, Philips Hue. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, I like. What, what is there to say? I'm coming towards financial year end. I'm fucking working hard, trying not to blow up like I did last March. Um, and that's what's up. That's what's up. I'm just keeping it moving, baby. Baby. Oh, I, I have. I've lost over a stone. That's awesome. That's uh, that's my. That's Give my me win. flowers, bro. That's right. That's what's up. Fatty. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I'm still not exactly slim, but no, you're slim, bro. Your t-shirts looking baggy. I would never. Looking I, would looking never I would never. Congratulations, bro. You're. A, I don't know. What, what's fair. your waist size now? Thirty two. What are we working uh, with? Thirty three. Thirty three. I'm a thirty. I'm a thirty three. Really, but I like 34 for the yeah? extra for the extra hang. I'm, I'm a don't look at my hips like that. I think I'm a 31. Don't look at my hips like that again. You're also five foot four. Allow so. it, bruv. I'm five foot four. Yeah. What was your waist? Four. What's your waist? <laughs> I'm like 31, 32. Never in this life. Thirty serious. Big man thing. <laughs> Big man thing. Why does everybody do that? They say big man thing and I've got to believe you. Is that, is that, is that <laughs> how it goes? Yeah, that's that, that's 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 the conclusion. Big man thing. That's a grown up version of a story of my mum's life. Yeah, for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big um, team. Zab, what are you saying, man? Bro, I've had a bit of a wild day, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it, Zab. I know exactly how Zab's day has been. <laughs> so, boom. So, imagine, right? So, boom. So, imagine, right? There's these, there's these, if, if anyone follows me on the pod, right, you'll know how much 
of a like a fan am of the Yeezy foam runners. No. They're basically like a they're, they're basically like crocs on steroids. Yep. That's like perfect. the ergonomics, the, the the technology behind it, they're ergonomics. made out of like recycled algae. Like the, it's just per, it's a perfect shoe, <laughs> right? Algae. Listen, it's they, a perfect algae? shoe. Algae. They look hella Listen. You watch your mouth, boy. <laughs> it's not um, even this algae. So basically it? I've been I've been like, I've been a massive fanboy of these these um these uh they're basically like trainers slash like crocs slash they're crocs bro litty crocs by easy um, and basically um i've been f- i've been on these for like two years straight yeah and then today was the day so last night the excitement um kept me up at night um that's i wild. stayed up till like three in the morning that's my chat and then i took a nap um basically oh. a nap i woke up at six this is wild bright and early mm. i brushed my teeth made a italian coffee um set up in the in the um kitchen in the kitchen in the living room just to confirm did you take the day off work to buy these shoes no i didn't um, i took the day off work to sort He's out a lie. to help my sisters move mm, it's completely um, time shout out tash shout out tash shout out tash and um yeah so then i basically sat there from you're the not six. telling the story well enough mate basically i just took it out today in it <laughs> <laughs> so I, I entered, I, I entered can, all the raffles. Can I break it down more? Yes, please. Zavas wanted these shoes, mm-hmm. which are like some, as he said, like Crocs on cocaine. Trash. For about two years. Oh, God. Yeezy's been teasing and teasing and teasing, handing these little Crocs out to CEOs here, left, right, and center, coming out of studios looking comfy, comfy Comfort in these bad boys. Table. We didn't know when these things were going to drop. And I was adamant that these were the ugliest kicks I've ever seen in my life. They are the ugliest and kicks I like I've ever seen in my life. And I like Yeezy. I like Yeezys. Not all of them, but I had a moment with them. And two of my favorite pairs of trainers. The pain in his face. Two of my favorite pairs of trainers ever are Yeezys. Um, the Wave Runners and the Statics, right? These in particular, I told Zabby at the beginning of his whole love affair with them that they were awful. And I think if you, I think if you listen back to like episode three or four, maybe when we spoke about them, I said, yeah. Please don't leave the house with me. With I think them. I laughed at a picture of them. I think we laughed. But I don't know what came over me, right? Maybe I was on Instagram and I saw a couple of people look, wearing them in a way that I reckon I could get off. So I messaged Zab and I was like, you know what, mate? I think I'm actually interested. It's just shit chat. Right? Shit chat. And um, fast forward to this morning when they released at half six. Just got to make sure you're on the app at that time. Wait, there's an app for Yeezys? Yeah, no, it's the Adidas app. How okay. old are you, bro? Yeah, Johnny, like you old gotta enough, stop. You, you, no, 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 Johnny, you gotta stop this whole cool shoes, shit. Bro. No, you got, you gotta stop this whole. I'm cool oh, shit. I'm above you. Shut up, bro. You're Shut below, bro. Up. You're below. How about that? You're beneath Shut us. Shut up, <laughs> Johnny. You are beneath us, Johnny. My name's Johnny, and all I wear is Air Force Ones and Air Maxes, maybe. That's fucking right. Well, what more? What other crap do you need than Air Force? Come one? on, shut up. Back anyway, to the story. Back yeah. to the story. So I end up, I end up logging into the app at half six this morning, go back to bed, wake up to a nice little alert saying that I had won them. And anyone who knows me knows that I have a <laughs> quite a fair bit quite a fair bit face. of luck with raffles. <laughs> um I did the friend thing. I didn't want to send him a message until I knew that he was also a winner. <laughs> so when my phone vibrated, I opened up the WhatsApp and I saw his name. I was just waiting for the good news. I even did like a I even did the Trinity in it like <laughs> right it was bad news. It turns out in raffles, certain man are local, certain man are global, certain man are global. It, he, certain man are universal. He bro. hadn't. Universal he had not in the raffle game. He hadn't won the the seventy pound Crocs. Wait, hear me out. Hear me um, out so I sent him a video of mine, which was the nicest way I could break no, it to him that is, I had been wait, successful. Wait, wait. Pause, pause. Can I can I can I can I end sex in his video? Gone. He edited the video. You think <laughs> no, 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 I didn't. He, there's shh, shh. I kind of did. It's not like he screen recorded it. He fuck? actually screen there's recorded reason, it. There's a, there's a reason. He screen recorded it and then he Smash cropped it. it. And then basically, no he made sure he kept the bit of the suspense where it was just circulating. I didn't do and that. And then it's shh. And then, and then, and then all you see is like NSG confirmed, drip <laughs> confirmed. I didn't do that. Bro, you, I just, hey, the that's thing just is, the app. I, I know Richard. He's very clean when it comes to the editing. Okay. And the way he I cropped, didn't edit no, it. No, no, he didn't edit it, but he basically cropped it clean. Okay. Yeah. So when I got it, I but was there's watching a reason. it. There's a I was reason. watching it and I saw confirmed. I there's a know, reason. I'm happy for you, bro. But there's a reason. Mm-hmm. He ain't been happy for me. Does, this, happy, does he seem like I'm, a guy who's I'm happy, happy for, for me? I'm happy for you, but I'm also fucking exactly. fuming. So I'm now, fuming. I'm happy for him. So now Zav is in a... In a, in a I'm happy for him and Scott. Zav is in a quandary. 
He's in a, every, how he's, has everybody got their fucking shoes? He's in an emotional quandary, <laughs> so to speak. Keep going with young, the story. Go all the way. Young Zabby. Go all the way, by the way. Young no Zabby's in a quandary. He, okay. No filter. He's been messaging me today, but there's been a little bit more sass on the end of okay. every every full stop. I'm also hearing more. this story for the first time, listeners. You know, he well. used to call me the raffle god, but now he's just like, yeah, yeah. Big toe, big toe raffle god. Mm. You know, the only reason you won is because you got these in a size 12, which, you know, I mean, I, mean, I just took a punt. I don't know what these sizes are. I'm a size 11 anyway. Comes around and he's on Depop. Mm. If you don't know what Depop is, it's no, a reselling site. Explain, he's explain on, the in between. He's on, he's on, he's on StockX. Explain the, explain, explain the PayPal fit. He's on StockX and so on and so forth. He's like, I'm going to get these shoes. And if I don't win them, I'm going to lose it. I'm, and I can't afford to lose I it. I can't afford to lose it. <laughs> During the day, he's entered a few raffles from earlier on this week, and some of these things have done have all take, of them. Have taken all the of money, them. have taken the money out of the PayPal, no. it's like a pre-authorization. And Zavis, if you win, basically, Zavi's a local raffle man. Yeah, and if you win the <laughs> raffle, then they take the money for good. It's not global. Fam. Zab's money is in Zab's money still in the in the pre-authorization stage in his oh, PayPal, so he's no. he's like edge of his seat, just tense, like, oh my god, I'm out, I want it. Oh my god, I'm out, I want it. And I'm like, no, actually, they've sent out all of the all of the successful emails, no, bro. Basically, it's one of the ones that if you've got the shoes, you know by now. Yeah, exactly. I said I'm not sure. I'm just trying to find yeah, the nicest way to break it to my buddy that like it's just not your potion. It is not your potion in Jesus' name. <laughs> You're not so mad, yeah. And then turns out Zav is actually just gonna cop these things on retail for <laughs> three resell, three times. Resell. What did I say? Free sale. Oh, you said retail. I'm so basically uh, you're gonna pay three times the price to get yes, this crap, yes. which look like dog shit anyway. I'm, I'm buying both colours. We're gonna show what? you guys these buying kicks. Both colors. People out there buy they are expensive butters. things. Like but stupid I like things, but these make me happy. I'm buying them. Do you know? I yeah, hard. I mean I you're allowed to do anything you want. But you're not so crazy. With your money. Be good to you. You're not bro. so crazy. When you're not winning raffles, yeah, and sneakerheads if you're listening. <laughs> When you're not winning raffles, but you want to just see if you got the confirmation, yeah? That's when you start going into Gmail and going to promotions and socials junk. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Start, junk a lot. Me, I start pulling down on the emails page for do the, yeah. the forced refresh. But you, you're one Make of them sure motherfuckers who still got like 4,000 unreads though, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I don't like you. 100%. So like yeah, yeah, so basically... Like call me if it's important, call so me. So basically nah, today... Nah, nah, delete your email. So basically what I did is that I basically did the marketing for these phone runners for two years. You gave them Other, free marketing a, for free real. marketing, and then people I know around me won them, yeah. And then I got nothing. Oh my basically. god! Oh my god! But you know what? It is well. It is well. Oh. And on that note, how are you, Rich? Mate, I'm okay actually. Yeah, like last week, it was um. Oh, sorry, last time it was obviously emotional for all of us. Mm -hmm. Listening back to that thing was heavy to listen to. It felt as heavy listening to it as it did recording it. Mm -hmm. But like. Yeah, man, since then I've been good, man. I've like, just been trying to like stay positive and all of that. There's certain things that come around that just hit me from a news perspective, certain things that just hit me and just take the life out of me a little bit. And that was one of the things, as much as I try to like not actively immerse myself in that story. But yeah, since then, man, it's been all right, bro. Just been like taking walks when I can and cleaning the house. And Pete, Pete was around, was he? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Pete popped over. Do you know what nice, I mean? Man. He needs a haircut, but that's all good. Like, he knows it. What he's cutting his dreads? Nah, he needs to he needs to trim the edges and that because okay. he's got dreads and that. He needs to yeah, he needs to ship up. Anybody in your lives and shit got the vaccine? But you know it's a bit of a joke, yeah, because like two twos, a few of my boys have got the vaccine. They yeah? snuck up and they GP. A few have got the vaccine. A mumsy, fifty nine years old, sixty in July, no vaccine. Fam. She not been texted. No vaccine, bruv. What? No vaccine. It's kind of obviously like where mumsy is hard enough to tell cancer to fuck off. A little virus not going to do yeah, any damage. Yeah, yeah. I want to see my mummy, fam. Like she needs For to sure. get a vaccine so I can go see her. You know what I'm saying? So like, she hasn't even been approached. Hasn't been called. Although two twos, like there is no phone signal where she lives, so it's <laughs> not Wi-Fi based. Right, they best. might have called her months ago, but she yeah, got no yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, no, because that's a bit mad. Because like, um, although what you you've touched on two things. Like one is my sister who works in the NHS, but she works as an accountant, and so not like client facing and shit. Mm. She got off offered the vaccine before my mum, who is who works as a nurse in mental health. Mm with mental health patients got offered one and she's client facing and you know, COVID are in wards, right? Mm. So you would have thought that she would have got it. But she, my mum's since had hers and she's calm. Um, she got the AstraZeneca, my sister got the AstraZeneca. As well. No, my sister got the Pfizer. Um, but yeah, if you're 60, you, yeah, if you're above like 50 now, you pretty much should have had a should, text yeah, or and, whatever. And also like two twos, there's more fucking cows than people. Where yeah. Like, so like it's she definitely uh, should have got it. But it seems like it's been a bit, it's been a bit random because again, like, like I said, like a few of my boys who neither are, work for the NHS are vulnerable or are old, 
they've all got the vaccine. Whereas, but auntie who works in an NHS hospital, yeah, she only maybe only just recently got it. Yeah, if yeah, she's yeah. Got it at all, and like David, cousin David, brother David, whatever. He um he's a teacher and he hasn't been given it. So you think like after nurses, maybe teachers should be the most yeah most given profession because they're dealing with kids. It's all everything. very mad. Spread the shit around, but, yeah, it's, it's all very mad. What about you? Yeah, your mates, you said, got it as well. Did they sneak in at the end of the GP? I, that, I think they've basically... Yeah, so that's basically yeah, by the so. way, yeah, by the way, listeners, if you are really, really keen on getting these things, right, the way this whole thing works, if you're not aware by now, is a lot of these GPs, a lot of these um, vaccination there's rollout... Lot le- there's a lot of leftovers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They get called up on the day, basically, um, and get told that you're going to be allocated X amount of things. And obviously, these things need to be stored in a in a specific condition, temperature-wise and so on and so forth. So time, right? exactly for a limited period of time. So they got to get rid of these bad boys. So if you are close to a GP or close to a vaccination rollout program, which is Call usually them. just like in a gym somewhere or some sort of a science museum or whatever it may mm-hmm. be local to you, um, yeah, rock up or call them, and chances are you'll be able to slide in and get your uh, get your jab. So if that's you, if you're if you're that way inclined and you want to get it done, you can. Um, but yeah, you were saying. Yeah, so no, I know a few people. Uh, I ain't snitching, so I'm gonna say a few people who um, <laughs> who. Uh, Basically, they're not even like the healthy, the young, but they just want to travel, in it? Facts, yeah. So basically, one of them, his missus volunteered to like do the jab service. Mm. He got, he slid through that way, um, got a jab, she got a jab, and then she's never went back. Oh, for yeah. real? Yeah, so she... yeah. <laughs> but she needs stage two anyway. Otherwise, and then the basically, and then basically, um, someone else got one because his mate is a, his housemate is a doctor. Okay. So he got yeah, the back yeah. door. But um, it's crazy because I saw something about, is it AstraZeneca or Pfizer who basically said that their vaccine isn't as impactful as they thought it would be. So then they're recalling. Um, uh, no, I don't. I saw it like on the I news. Don't know I saw it on Sky News yesterday. I don't yesterday know anything night. about that, right? The whole AstraZeneca thing was they were saying that it was causing blood clots. Yeah, in... but recently, yesterday on, on Sky News, I saw one of them said that they their research wasn't, yeah, so so this is what I'm saying. So it was AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca is the one that's basically caught all of the or caught all of the smoke recently, mm-hmm, yeah, right? Yeah. The European Medical Association, or what it's called, the EMA, yeah. basically rubber stamped the uh, the AstraZeneca, saying it was safe, efficacy not as high as the Pfizer, but still very much safe. I think a couple of months before that, they were saying that the data, the testing that they used for the AstraZeneca initially wasn't aimed at old enough people or enough old people for it to be considered safe enough for old people. So it's basically had continued snags. But what happened this week and last week was the US, there was an independent US study Mm -hmm. which took place, Mm. which again, deemed AstraZeneca safe. But then a few days after that, they were like, the data that they used during that test was outdated. I don't even know how that's possible, given that this is all a new phenomenon. But yeah, it's it's a little bit riddled in in, in uncertainty. But ultimately, the AstraZeneca is supposed to be safe. It's just not the Pfizer, where in Israel, they're basically saying it's like 100% efficacy, everybody's calm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, Pfizer is like, apparently like the golden copy at the time, for the time being. Mm -hmm. But boy... If you want to take the vaccine and you got an opportunity to take the AstraZeneca vaccine, take that shit. I out. think they still found. I think so. Like the US report came out and said that it's seventy nine percent effective against getting it, yeah, or any kind of symptoms, but a hundred percent effective against hospitalization. Yeah. But the important thing, what the EMA confirmed, was that AstraZeneca's defense was that the rates of embolisms or blood clots is still lower among people who've had the vaccine than the general population. Yeah. So the argument that this vaccine gives you blood clots isn't necessarily backed up in science yeah, in yeah. a wider pool yeah, as yeah. yet. So if your main concern about taking the AstraZeneca vaccine is blood clots, it's that's not been proven. Yeah. And almost it's been proven not to be true. And it's also important to say as well that I know many people who have been um, signed up to go and take their vaccine got to the desk where they're about to get their injection and are told at that point, by the way, they're told at that point, you're going to be taking the AstraZeneca, you're going to be taking the Pfizer. I know people who have gone in there with um, a preference before going in, mm-hmm. knowing that they wanted to take the Pfizer, for example. And if it wasn't the one that they were given, then they decided to leave. Oh, so you've real? also so you've also got that option. You know what I mean? Yeah, that. I think I'd probably take anyone that I can get at the moment, especially when they're talking but about it, like you need a, you need a, you need to have the vaccine passport to travel. Or you need to have the vaccine. Passport yeah, that's to the thing. The, the passport things like you don't you think is insane? I was chatting about earlier with my sister about how like we were all or as a whole like generalizing. Yeah, 
we were all quite anti-vaccine. I'm not taking the vaccine if I don't need to, blah, blah. And it's crazy how like, that's still what I'm on, the by government, the way. Huh? That's still what I'm on, by the way. But yeah, but it's crazy how, like, how the, the government and media and stuff have like, how easily they're able to like change your thought process about it. To now everyone's like, oh, you got a vaccine yet? It went from like, oh, you're taking it. Oh, no, I'm not taking it, blah, blah. And now it's like, oh, you got a jab yet? Oh, yeah. What, what, which one do you have? Or this and that. It's just crazy. Talking and about now, like a pair of Yeezys. And then now, now because, huh? They're talking about like a pair of Yeezys now. It's crazy, isn't yeah. it? And then like, you think you think to yourself like, now obviously everyone wants to take it out of convenience because people want to travel, people want to go out properly. And, you know, obviously there's new rollout, especially for like people who are like, like English people. Mm, like, mm, mm. You know, there's rollouts about not going to bars and pubs without mm-hmm. having a vaccine passport and mm-hmm. stuff. So in order for people to have access to freedom, people are more enticed to take the jab. Right? Yeah. But my, my, my only thing is, I mean, if I need to take a jab, I'll take it. But at the same time, I'm not in a rush for it unless, yeah. I, unless I need to. And plus, I feel like with any new drug, there are going to be side effects, which mm. we, 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 which we've seen on like a minuscule level. Yeah. But at the same time, it's still impacting lives. Yeah. So like I just would rather it be tested out. Sorry for any vegans or any protests. Animal rights on, people. Yeah. Animal rights people. I'd rather it be testing out on like some, some guinea pigs or like chimps or whatever for a little bit before they roll out to humans and then it minimizes those chances. And me, as we know already from our Yeezy, sto- our Yeezy story, I'm just known to, to have bad luck sometimes. So like... <laughs> I just, I just, I just, yo, vac- yo, yo vaccines, <laughs> vaccines are not <laughs> easy raffles, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yo. Uh, and in general, like, I've just got like genuinely, whenever like I'm, the, I'm that person. A mad he. story, a mad story will always happen to me more he. than other people. He. So I just wouldn't want to be in that in in that space of taking the vaccine, and then I'm, um, I happen to be the one in the million people. He, yeah. that, no, like, man, you, you hit the nail on the head though, right? Like a lot of the cases that we've heard about, the negative ones, are very much in the minority there's always going to be these things, unfortunately, right? When we're dealing with medication, like there's always going to be side effects. People are going to react differently to, to different things. Testing only gives you a certain a certain level of certainty um, against adverse side effects. So it's, it's one of those things, right? It, we just have to be, we just have to be smart. We have to be wise. There are going to be people who are waiting it out. Some people who, who rush to the doors, like, Fuck it. I respect your decision. Do I your think thing. there's been enough testing. Do your thing. Man. I yeah, think testing, testing. There's, 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 there's been loads of testing. Evidence. There's been Run loads of testing. Run me my fucking jab. Let me go and see my mum and get battered in the pub. I feel you, bro. Yeah. This politicization of this whole like EU, UK vaccine situation. But that's like, where the majority it, of this Ast- AstraZeneca chat yeah, has come it's from. Just, right? It's just it's long. Just shit like people, people's lives depend on this right now. We've, we've suffered enough. Um, whether it's governmental mind tricks, whether or not they're locking us down long enough to the point where we're like... You know, we're grateful for capitalism. Yeah, 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 yeah. Style. We're dying to get style. out, so we're just like, give me, give me one. You know what I mean? Let, it's, me, it's, let me, let me go back to the office, please. Let yeah, me work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Um, but it I'm is looking forward is, to. I'm Basically, looking forward to being out. Fascist. Straight to the. F- <laughs> 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 so they reckon that we're going to be doing festivals this summer. We got Park Life in Manchester and Wireless in Crystal Palace. Pause. To- okay. Yep, Crystal fair. Palace. That's, that's fair. fair. That's Crystal a fair Palace, pause. yeah. Pause. 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 Listen, for me personally, doing wireless at Crystal Palace for me is the ghetto. Yeah. I'm in the ghetto. Bro, it's in the ghetto. Ratatata. Ratatata. <laughs> Listen, but, the um, quite no, yeah. but it has it has over the years. Um, People are going to get. Jets, it has over bro. the years in terms Actually. of its in terms of in terms of its uh, its location, and I guess that's linked to its budget. The first time I went to Wireless, it was a big old High Park, innit? it. That's where it's always been, though. Nah, because nah, it went from High Park to Finsbury Park oh, in the last few ends, years. Bro. Um, none of which I went to. Dead end. And then now it's Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace. The Crystal Palace. Ends. Yeah, it's ends. It's proper ends as well. It's like, gonna right? be magical. It's, it, it's like not not to give up where I live, but it's not far from where I live. Yeah, yeah. And like, bruv, like, Chris Palace. Yeah, you're gonna hear it. You. <laughs> Chris Palace. Yeah, bro. Like, imagine Lil Uzi Vert going Chris Palace. I see all these memes. Oh. Bro. Right, imagine, yeah. imagine Lil Uzi Vert. Yeah, for his jewel. Bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lil Uzi Vert would get stuck up. Bro, I was sticking yeah, him up. Yeah, How about yeah. that? Yeah. I just snitched on myself. But, but no, I but, was sticking him up. But jokes aside, it like, was me. But jokes, but jokes aside, what do you, what do you man like briefly? What do you, do you reckon these things are going to take place? Do you reckon they're just being blindly optimist? 
They basically Optimistic. the way I see it, right? What's wrong with is me that today? The, 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 the way, the way I see it, yeah, from Jesus. like a from like a business level, from like a business perspective, right? Lockdown is like a roll the dice thing, isn't it? Like we've got a couple of vaccines in now, but it's still not too certain as yeah. to where we're going with lockdown. So in order to make sure you minimize your risk, right? And you sort of hedge yourself, you want to go for somewhere that's probably not that expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, whereby if you needed to call it off and potentially either reschedule the date or cancel it, it's probably more manageable doing mm. somewhere like Crystal Palace Park than yeah. um, what's the one in North London? Finsbury. Finsbury Park, you but know what I mean? also pretty shit. But, but it's yeah. mad though, because like, the in, like, in terms of like, from looking, at, looking at it from like a, a logistics standpoint, um, Crystal Palace hasn't got the greatest links to places unless you're getting on the overground, but you're changing somewhere. Mm. And to be honest with you, it's just, it's gang, bro. Like, <laughs> Is no. it really that bad around Crystal Palace? Bro, Crystal Palace, yeah. I don't go south of the river, so I don't know yeah. Put it this way, yeah. Crystal Palace is yeah, one of the places. It's just bookie because you've got like gypset around the corner. Okay. I don't know and what it is, but okay. Basically, I think that like, we're like... Travellers. Crept or... Crept no, no gyps, Gypsy Hill. But you've Oh, got, I like, thought you meant like gypsies. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no Gypsy Hill. No, Gypsy Hill <laughs> You is, can tell um, how long I've been off the streets. All right, Patel. No, Gypsy, <laughs> gypsy Hill is... Um, it's not too gypsy, far from Crystal Palace. Gypsy, gypsy. Um, I think one of the two, Kreps or Co- I think Conan's from Gypsy Hill. Okay. But you got them man there around there, and it's like it's, and then you got Ghost Town, and then you got. So it's just Bookie ends basically. Is you got you got Ghetto Boys around the corner from Sydenham. Mm-hmm. It's just mad, bro. So basically, if Lou Uzivert goes there, fam, okay. he needs to be MIA. Fam. He's getting moved but if, to like. But the if vision. like if if Drake goes there, he can like. He can hang out at my place off as you want to and like just catch up oh, and stuff. This and makes me feel sick. Yeah, yeah, you can hang out. He can hang out, hang out at my place. Him and OVO, they can all chill at my place, bro. Drake can hang out at he your can, place. Well, you, can, you can finally have they the listening party out, to his What's own album you? at your game. Huh? What's wrong with you? Why do you bro. say things like this? No. Drake can hang out at my bro, place. Bro, you got a dirty mind, bro. I didn't say a damn thing. You took it there. No, you did it there. You what did I there. say? What did what did I even say? I, I actually don't even want to engage. I don't want to engage. No, what I'm saying is, yeah, if it's if yo, Drake, if you're listening out at my place. Drake, if you're listening. Come on over Drake, to my if, place. Drake, if you're listening and you're going to wireless, bro, he's not big man ting yet. If you want to keep it low, you know it's yeah, you're not so crazy. Um, if you he's if you look his at mind, bro. if you look at um Thanks twenty, listen, listen. If you scroll down to Drake's, if you scroll down on Drake's page, yeah, 2018, he was hanging out with Sade, oh and um, the location was Gypsy Hill. Big man ting, anyone can check that. No one how wants have to, you, how no, have you no one wants to check Instagram that. Instagram no one wants to check this that. I remember that God. When, I, when, I, when I bought my flat. These aren't facts that anybody wants to. This is No, nah, I remember that. When I bought my flat, yeah, I was like, raw, Drake's in Gypsy Hill. That's right on the corner, fam. Raw. He's local, fam. Sweetie and Cuevo. Wow. You segued me. <laughs> um, I'm not finished. 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 We've segued. I'm not finished. I'm finished. We've I'm segued. It's about I'm not finished. Back to, back to wireless. I just think it's a massive downgrade. To be going to South from London because it's shit. To South, no. that's not even it. That's not even the Yo, thing. To that's be mad chat. It's not South London's <laughs> the greatest, bro. We're the realest. Yeah, and, don't um, listen to him. But I'm just saying, like, ends, bro, going from Finsbury Park to Chris Palace for me is a massive downgrade. You're basically getting a diet. You're getting a diet wireless festival. But in fact, let's make that one of the chat. That's a diet wireless festival. But <laughs> that's diet really wireless. Rich. That's really but rich. do you reckon these things are going ahead? That was actually that was actually ahead. the main point of they this haven't topic. Got sure. a, they, they haven't even got a roll out of the lineup. Yeah, so no, they're, so just, they're securing no, right, the peace. So that's, that's kind of secondary, right? But is it going to go ahead? Depends on the country's ability to deal with the, with the virus, right? Yeah. When is it? This meant to be like June, July. I think it's July. So we've already June got fifty percent of the country vaccinated, fifty percent of adults vaccinated in this. With country, potential right? delays on the horizon, by the way. Fine, but let's say that we've already done fifty percent. I reckon the con- like of adults in the country. By the time we get to July, we'll be like what sixty five percent, seventy percent. Hmm. So if you think only thirty, there's going to be a steep, a massive, massive fall off in the amount of people who participate after the after the vulnerable group, for sure. But people who aren't vulnerable are still being vaccinated now. So the fifty percent yeah. doesn't is not just vulnerable people. But it's, it's, that fifty percent is of all adults in the country. It's not fifty percent of vulnerable adults. It's fifty percent of all adults. Okay. So the point I'm making is that let's say that sixty five percent of the country is vaccinated by the time wireless happens. Right. It only means that thirty five percent of the country, if the vaccine works, is even eligible to become hospitalized, which means that the strain on the NHS by an uptick in infections is much lower than it would have been a year ago. So the point is that we're, we will be allowed to move around because the health system will be able to deal with the rising cases because so many more people will be immune to the virus in the first place. 
This so is the whole point of the government strategy about no, I get it. Go, being aggressive on the vaccines. I get it. I just, if the, if you can still potentially spread this thing and people can still potentially get ill and you have a huge population of people, i.e. the young people who A, don't want to take it and B, are just gallivanting around, mm -hmm. then I worry about the risks. Um, but that's not the conversation here. You think it's gonna? You think that's gonna? The question go ahead. is, is it gonna get cancelled? Though Afro nation I, in Portugal. I think if sixty-five percent of the country is vaccinated, then there's no, there's no reason. Portugal is a different thing. We've all got a vested interest in making sure we can get to Portugal. Fucking hell! Tell me about. Um, also, yeah. a different question depends how much Europe ha fucking hates us by the time we get yeah, there. For real, for real, Do you reckon for real. if we go to Portugal, right, whenever that will be? Um, do you reckon like clubs be open by like July, June, them times there? Uh no. Yeah, we're going. By the way, we're going to Villamora after the thing. We're going. I mean, me and you are going down to the south. Also, oh, as you're gonna say, if we go to Portugal, we're going down to uh, to the Algarve for a week. We're getting, for a week, we're yeah. It. Yeah, we're getting it. All right. Do you want? And we should, we should like just do a Airbnb hotel thing. Or or yeah, like yeah, Airbnb, yeah, yeah. I've got yeah, the whole. Yeah. I've got the whole plan pattern. So, basically, we're going. So Johnny and Zabby going on an adventure. That's what's up, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> Thanks for the invite. Um. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, no, that's you're welcome, Rich. No, no, Sweetie and Cuevo. You weren't invited. Like, yeah, no, thanks. It's all good. I know. I was here. I was here for that whole thing. I was here for that. It was basically like a Zabby and Johnny thing. conversation. And it's all good. It's and all on good. Zoom, we it's were like it's making good. eye you, contact. Bruv, yeah, just, yeah, go, yeah. just go, just go, just, just, have you hit secure on, have you hit confirm on your 300 pound Crocs? Just show up. Listen, I have hit Trying confirm. To, just go. I actually, I actually transferred the money already. Exactly. Good. Congrats, bro. And it was 250 pounds, please. So the record, <laughs> not three hundred. Don't make me don't don't make me go out like that, sweetie. Even though two fifty is still a bump. <laughs> and Quavo, I have been bumped. You bumped yourself, sweetie and Quavo. Sweetie that, and Quavo. If that's what you want to talk about. You should have just said rap music's latest <laughs> breakup. So can you can you talk me through like can you talk me through like like the the scene like what like in order? it all started in an Instagram DM. I'm so icy, baby. That's, Sweetie that's posted guy, something. Quavo like what he saw. He put an, a snowflake. Quavo is the one who's emoji. not offset, right? That's all he did. That's how they got together. And she sent back the bowl with the noodles. Ramen. And then he said... I love ramen. Was it ramen? Is that what you call it? <laughs> I love ramen. <laughs> I guess. It's fully not relevant to the chat. I have ramen at four times this week. <laughs> I guess you are, you are, That's the modern version of I like lamp. <laughs> I guess it is ramen. I love actually. syrup. And then he says something like, so what'd he do? And she was like, what's happening? And then they got together. And then a year later, I think it's less than a year, maybe a little bit more than a year. Did they have any kids? They, no. no, they weren't, no, 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 no. But they're no longer together. And look, man, Quavo, what the fuck have you done? Oh. <laughs> well, he's... Quavo. He's, he's done us man buddy. a favor. He's fumbled the bag so we can all eat. Buddy. He, he's done us a favor. Sometimes we have to compromise. Mm. We have to compromise, man. She <laughs> might have a fucking ugly personality, but boy, oh boy, that's the only thing let that's me, ugly about her. Let me check out her. properly. Uh -uh. Well, no, but for real. But for real, I don't really give a fuck about all that. Anyway, um, so what he did when they broke up, right? Some king shit. Was he sent bailiffs around to her yard that's to right. pick up that's some right. things. That's right. <laughs> Pe Judging by Johnny's response to that's that, right. I think he's in agreement that that's that should right. be the Say natural order of operations. It makes me feel good when I hear it. I think he went over with bailiffs to pick up a truck or a car that he had bought for her. Which car? Say it. I don't know. What was it? Was it a Bentley. 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 Bentley GT customized as well. Them things Ooh. don't come cheap. Oh, so he customized it. See, this yeah, is this it's, is it's the it's thing, customized, man. Customized, custom. I mean, which is why look, 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 every now and again, every now and again, man, I salute my toxic mind them in it because sometimes we just have to be, you know, it's a cold world in it for us and sometimes we just have to. Bro, he's still paying it off, fam. No, no, but for real, oh. but for Obviously, the man, the man of finance in the team, isn't it? No, no but, this, but this, yeah, of course, mm. of course, they're smart. Mm. If you're smart, you buy the car, right, bro? If you're smart, and yeah, if you're smart with your license, money, if you're smart with your money, then you shouldn't, yeah. be, you, you shouldn't be doing that. You don't have to whisper; everybody can hear you. Um, <laughs> you <don't have> <laughs> <laughs> I actually think he was gonna whisper right in front of the microphone, and no one's gonna hear it. Nice one. I nah, but for real, don't have a license, guys, bro. guys, guys. Have you ever broken up with somebody and reclaimed gifts? I haven't, but I've been tempted. I've, I have. Do you know what? I've, so I've done both. I've, I've called back jumpers 
Uh, Wait, what? Yeah, I've called back jumpers. That you bought for her? Yeah, no, no, no. They were my jumpers that she made. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking, you've bought something of significant value and then you're like, you know what, bro? That's going to be better in my house now that we're mm, over. No, so like so like one ex, I called back my jumpers and another ex, I, I bought her PlayStation, but I did let her keep the PlayStation, mm. to be fair. I didn't call that back. But it, oh, it was a Bentley fam. You're damn right, bruv. You're damn right I'm calling that yeah, back. But, but it's... If I'm buying a girl Bentley or a Guinea, yeah, bro... Don't abbreviate it like you've already got one. No, I'm saying if I'm buying a girl a Bentley or like a lamb or Lamborghini. Guinea, <laughs> wait, so wait. Like, he went from Guinea. We we called him. Lamb. We called him on that, and then he called it a lamb. <laughs> a lamb. What's next? Yeah, that, that's that's like the short abbreviation for it. To a you, listen, you listen to too much hip hop. No, that's like, that's like, maybe it's a city thing. That's what they call it. They call it lamb or Guinea. City boys, that was up. Yeah, but um, <laughs> match out. I hate city boys, bro. If you uh, if, if 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 you get that for a girl, a bro, guinea. you're getting that back. A guinea, a guinea or a, a lamb. Gu- a guinea when Aldum. <laughs> no, no, you know, you know, you normally either call it a lamb or a He's guinea. A but you never seen lamb and guinea. I thought it was Lambo. It's a Lambo. No, no, no. And, and, you, a Lambo. and you call it Ferrari a Fezza. That's a city thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but no, it's a Lambo. It's not a guinea. These no, no, motherfucking no. We say, traders. We say, we say guinea. Bastardizing the we beautiful say Queen's English. <laughs> What, no, it's a, a feza. feza. It's a feza in a Lambo. Yeah, a feza. feza. Isn't feza place in like Spain or some That's shit? That's fez, not a feza. It's, it's yeah. also in Morocco. A feza, a feza, oh, no. or a, you call it a feza. I felt we call it a, a, Lambo. a Lambo. Yeah. Or shorter, you call it a lamb or a guinea. No, I don't believe either of those. Dead serious. Well, I don't. So would you take your guinea back from Saweetie? Yes, hundred percent. I'm still paying that off, bro. What are you talking about? Yeah, if it's on finance. That's that's that's, that's that's basically child support. If you had fam. one song that you could sing, Saweetie. To let her know how much you loved her <laughs> and how much, and how much hands up. up and how much and how much of a future she has with you I'll post one post I'll Quavo. You go first, Abby. Um, what would hands be? up? My hands up. Luther Vandross. So you got to sing it. No, no, you got to sing it. You're so amazing to be loved. I follow you to the moon and the stars. Creepy. Above. That's weird. Creepy. <laughs> Killed the mic. Excellent. All right, I've yeah. got a song. Leave a Vandross. What would you um, sing her? So amazing. <clears throat> Thank you Is that much. like a Jewish song? Yeah, that's the joke. Fair. <laughs> she might dig it. Do you want to hear mine? Yes, please. Do you want to hear yours? It's just a little crush. <laughs> Every time we touch. Why is it? I can just imagine you singing that topless in the rain. A hundred percent topless in the rain. Yeah, that's probably creepy. Yeah, hundred percent. Do the whole like with, do the whole with, body gyration. With a, yeah, like like body popping in leather. Whoa. Yeah, in Crocs, in Yeezy Crocs, in rain. Yeah, <laughs> just because, just because, no socks, just because I can, <laughs> no socks. You, yo, that, that, yo, do that again, please. Could you leave the door open? I'm gonna leave the door open. Right, I've got another song. I've got another one. I've got another one. I'm gonna leave the door open. Can I just play? Maybe I'll just, I'll just do old school. She can never not like this song. Go on. Soul for real, Candy Rain. Now you gotta Ooh. sing it. You gotta My sing it. My love, do you ever dream of? Candy cold and rain. You two have probably drops. fucking butchered this. You're the same, my candy rain. You can do like some Jodeci. Like some Jodeci. G-sex. Jodeci. Come and talk to me. I really want, want to meet you. you. Can I talk to you? Hey. I really want to hey, know this? How about this? you. Come back. Come bye, back. Bye, 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 bye. Honey, bye. this is where you belong in my heart What's this in one? my usher man that's not how he sings it nah b that's a that's a new single right there mm. bro <laughs> that's a new single right dj there. uh 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 dj uh 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 <laughs> no but um apparently he cheated on saweetie with regina carter daughter of wheezy that's no mad how was wheezy don't know he, uh, wheezy don't forget he started young young right he yeah. was 14 when he come through in at 11 maybe yo so he's early name he's your, maybe name, late name 30s your, early 40s daughter. is he the same age as i can't Floyd? speak Floyd. Floyd's, Floyd's Floyd's daughter's dating like um Floyd's mid forties though, right? YMB YBN M- NBA Young Boy. NBA, NBA Young Boy. Boy. Even I know that. He is, Come on, yo, he's, scary, he's a scary. He's the scariest rapper in the world, yo. Is he? No, he's, he's scary. Scariest. No, he's scared. He's scared. There's someone scarier than him. Who? Name one. He's scary as hell, bro. Drake's scary. Just fam. look he's at him. He's, I mean that. Like, what? Drake? Drake from the six. Bruv, Drake. Bruv, Drake's the baddest Drake, Drake guy from the roll. six. Drake's the baddest guy on roll, fam. He's in Gypsy Hill, fam. Fam. 
So you perfect. guys, so you guys think it's perfectly don't acceptable. Exactly. You think it's perfectly acceptable for him to come and pick up his stuff, whether it be rings, whether it be Bentleys, oh, Guineas. Um, I, I, think, I think, I think, toxic um, gods. Here. That's what's up. I think, um, yeah, a Bentley. He's still paying it off. That's probably more than child support. He should be picking up. He should, he should be picking up. There's no children. Recall the ting, fam. Why you say child support? <laughs> no, I'm saying that the price of it is probably similar. Okay. I'm saying he yeah, should record. He should depending. record. The I'm team. taking out the Bentley. The rest of it's mad chat. Because you know, once he's customized it, he's properly tied in. Like, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. So that makes sense, man. Let him flex in that, or give it to his next thing. How can you cheat? How can you? <laughs> how can you cheat on Sweetie, bro? I yeah, know. that's mad chat. She is so. To pissed. be fair, she used her English very, very. But I didn't very appreciate. Openly, she used her English very openly. She said, "When your intimacy is shared with other women, mm. could it be that all he did was?" Send a, send a nude. What I didn't like though, Still wasn't cheating, it her that is that cheat? That's cheating. Is sending man. a nude a cheat? Yeah, that's cheating. Wasn't it her? Is it, you're in a relationship, you're sending nudes to other girls. That's cheating, man. Come on. Wasn't it her that did that yeah. thing about the um, Birkin bag? Wait, wait, wait. Is that cheating? What? Sending a nude? Yes. To somebody? That's cheating. Is it that's cheating? cheating? That's cheating. Come on, man. He'd be fuming if you're better than that to you. 100%. Imagine your missus sent a nude to a next man. 100%. Is that cheating? Yeah, I think it's a cheat, man. I'm, ta- cheap. I'm taking that. There's not a person living who's got my fucking balls in their inbox in it. Like, Amen. no pictures of me. Amen. There ain't no yes, news Amen. out there. But I'm just wondering because I'm not. Being, is it? Yeah, is that, I, is that I, cheating? That's cheating, so bro. Like, for, like, Shit. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, if I was to do that, if I was with someone and I was to send a picture to a girl, then that would, that would be me accepting that I'm doing something that's tantamount to cheating. Not that I would never do that because Jews don't cheat. Do you know what I mean? And speaking of cheating. Oh, boy. Lads, you're gonna have to gonna have to give me the floor for this one. Mm-hmm. Take it away. Cool. I had no idea who this guy was. No idea until the twenty second of March, twenty twenty one. No idea. All I know is that he is upset. Yeah. Upset. Mm-hmm. A whole population. Of women, he had broke the internet. Fam, I didn't know he was until he this has week, until yesterday. Irreparable wahala and nonsense in relationships that have nothing to do with him mm-hmm. because he sold these bitches' dreams. It's a lot of damage at our expense, though. He made a name for himself, mm-hmm. shitting on his fellow man. Mm-hmm. He made a few mistakes in his life. Turn to God. Ah. Oh. That's what we do. The classic segue. When the chips are down. Yes. Right. <laughs> and blame the demons. Yeah. Six Hail Marys and that, guys. You're done. And then he went on a rampage, a social media rampage. He became a self-exalted life coach, a mm-hmm. relationship counsellor. A... Americans love a life coach. A motivational speaker. That's what's up. Etc. 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 He amassed one hell of a fucking following, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Derek Jackson. Damn, man. Did you guys know who this guy was? I, I had not until never yesterday. heard of this guy. I get a feeling that like most of our listeners might not know who he is. So I'm going to give a bit of a breakdown into who this motherfucker is. Do you, sis? Don't call me sis. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm here for the breakdown. The love doctor got mm-hmm. a taste of his own medicine. A relationship guru with 1.3 million Instagram followers. Holy shit, he had 1.3 million? I didn't realize 600,000 subscribers on YouTube. Are you hearing that, Discord and Terribly listeners? Just just hit subscribe on our page. Um, has confessed to having multiple affairs after fans uncovered his indiscretions. Mamma mia. Derek Jackson, spelled J-A-X-N, which is very annoying, who preaches healing and healthy relationships, mm-hmm. took to Instagram Monday. To confess in a video in which his wife, Denea Jackson, also appeared. Oh boy, she was fuming. He said, the truth is, Derek Jackson, and he said this in third person, by the way. Which is so moist. The truth is, Derek Jackson was involved with other women Mm -hmm. outside the marriage. Mm -hmm. The marriage. The marriage. Mm -hmm. He said to the camera, speaking about himself in the third person. All of it falls under the category of cheating, affairs, stepping out. Mm Mm-hmm. This was seen by 2.6 million people in a day. Oh, shit. And this came about because, as I said, he has made fortunes and got popular because his whole shtick is, if you ain't ready to be in a relationship, if you can't put your promiscuous ways behind you before you get into a relationship with your woman, if you don't do things through God, you ain't a man. I don't respect you (laughs) if you can't put those things to the side before God. One of them, man. 
Can I just say, that was probably the best accent I've heard you do on this pod. Ever. Yeah, ever. I mean, it's a low bar, but you did clear it. Why can't you just give me roses without <laughs> the sass, this <laughs> motherfucker? Um, online gossip. The reason this came out is because an online gossip site of some sort mm -hmm. began to circulate news about him and his infidelities. That's right. With a person called Candice de Medeiros, which sounds Portuguese. Oh, very nice. Who claimed to have had an affair with him. Okay. After he allegedly told her that he and his wife had separated. <laughs> that oh, old chestnut. That old chestnut. That old classic that old humdinger. <laughs> um, the Daily Mail reported that this lady claimed that she and Jackson texted through the summer of 2020, spent his birthday together and slept in the <laughs> marital Bed. That is mad chat. Oh. That is mad chat. Through his birthday as well. How would you explain that one to you? Yes, my chest. Oh. The marital bed. Now that's actually disrespectful. Isn't it? Obviously, cheating is disrespectful, but like, doing it in, in the marital bed that is fucking mad chat. Not, not even like not even Premier Inn. This is the. <laughs> that's mad. <laughs> Premier Inn with no windows. Yeah. With no windows. No wonder. <laughs> I'll still get Canary named for that place, but that yeah, not even that. Yeah, that's the mad. thought of a hotel with no either way cheating's not windows, on, but like is that's mad. mad. Like yeah, but if you are gonna cheat, get windows. Yeah, 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 for real. Jackson originally claimed, and this this made me laugh. He originally claimed that he and his wife were separated at the time of the affair, and posted, but then deleted a video stating that he didn't cheat on her. Mm -mm. In this latest video, the one that's obviously blown up the internet. While they're holding hands, and if you've seen this video, you see that the one thing that's a consistent, it's a constant tight. throughout the video is him holding her hands with like the vice grip of life. Tight, tight, tight. Um, while she's just so nodding, no while she's just nodding along to the fraff that this motherfucker is spewing. Uh, if, if, he, if he let go of her hand, he's getting the back hand to the cheek, boy. Yeah. Um, and rightly so. After he said all he said, Denea backed him saying, there's nothing out there that I don't already know. I agree with people saying that there is no justification for bringing other women into our marriage. When I found out about it, I left. I did not come back until I saw a shift or a change in his mentality. <laughs> she should get, a, basically she should get a free run in it. She should like, she should get- a, <laughs> Is that how should, we resolve this? 100%, <laughs> like she should get a free night. Like he has to pay for a hotel and she can pick any man wherever they live. I don't know where they're from, but she should basically get a free night. And do you know what? If she wants to get a train one on her, Happy days, because he's cheating. Yikes. He's, already, he's, already, he's already broken the barriers. <laughs> Yikes. He's broken the barriers. She should get a free night where he can't ask no questions. He can't have no input. You've got to pay for the hotel room and let me do my thing. And then maybe I'll get back together with you. Otherwise, the thing's done. She needs to, she needs to get her own back on him, man. Oh, really, sorry. what's important is that I actually feel like I'm the victim from this sorry. whole Action Jackson episode. I feel like I've been victimized and stigmatized. Because, you know, like, it's hard enough being a man. And a faithful one at that. But now, like, because of him, I feel like I'm going to be accused of things that I haven't done. So really, this isn't a women's story. And it's not about his wife. It's about me. <laughs> uh, he's tricky, oh. He's but tricky. Did you mention that he dropped in that he's um, going to be releasing a book about it? Oh, he's what? he's an author. He's an author. So you better believe he's releasing the book about that there is going to be a video coming. About this whole thing, yeah. That that is, is that's what I think. Personally, I think that it's all a PR stunt. Oh, yeah? Personally, but apparently it's not. It's not like I used to be and a then, conspiracy. But then recently, <laughs> exactly. And then recently, I think last week, you know, he said that this all happened in the past. He, um, one of the girls came to the spotlight and basically showed receipts of just last week. He's done it yeah, again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah, yeah. He, like he recently, like last week. More came out. I'm not entirely sure. And this is where my uh, interest in the story dissipates quite massively. Yeah, some, some more stuff came out, but bro... Poor girl, like this poor Danae Jackson, right? Like he goes out there and does all of his gallivanting, all this nonsense, right? All the while recording videos Zav style in his car, just like licking his lips and shit, <laughs> like telling us why men are Thirst shit trapping. if they can't, you know what I mean? Thirst trapping and shit, right? <laughs> Haters. <laughs> this guy's actually this guy's all, actually friends with Drake, all, though. That's the difference between two. Yeah, exactly. Is he actually? All for us all to just find out you're not just you're not living your raps, bruv. You're not living your raps. What is going on, man? Yeah, like, why chat. do guys always do this shit? And why are there some like really, really self-righteous people out there who feel like their way to the top is by shitting on it's, everybody? It's the around. hypocrite complex, right? It's so fucking crazy. And even like the whole third person stuff is quite mad, isn't it? Because I, anybody who speaks about themselves in third person, I think is mentally deranged. That's, right? just, that's just toxic narcissism. That's crazy, right? To me. But that aside, right? Like it's the social media age, bro. Like what did you think was going to happen, man? Yeah, you're going to get caught. Like, like what did you think was going to happen, bro? Two, two, no, two, but the, the memes have been so funny, man. The memes have been so... Before we so get onto the memes, before we get onto the memes, and this is why so many men and so many women out there are just like tight, yeah? 
some of the shit this guy would say. Let me give you some uh, some humdingers from Derek Jackson, okay? If she's mine, just know that spiritually, she's being prayed for. Physically, she's being pleased. Emotionally, she's being protected. And financially, she's being supported, even if she doesn't need it. I can't half love a woman and expect her to give me her all. That's, that's what's up. <laughs> This guy's toxic. As this hell. guy's toxic. I like a- another one. Oh yeah, please. Faithful women will give you so much of their attention. You might start thinking it's because they have no other options. Truth is, they have plenty. They just don't entertain that shit. This Dude. is my chat. I, I almost don't want to give this guy a platform because he just sounds like. Nasty. If you're in a relationship, but the things that have been on your mind don't matter to your partner, you're really single. <laughs> this is such shit chat. This is just another narcissist who got caught cheating. Like, fuck this guy. This is the one. Gone. No real woman is going to just have patience while you're out entertaining other females. That's what I'm saying. She needs her night in a hotel, isn't it? Bro. Bang her in there with like Michael B. Jordan, Lenny, Whoever the fuck Lenny, she wants. Lenny Kravitz, Whoever Killian she wants. Murphy. Whoever she wants. All of them, man. Whoever she wants. Just She's got a free pass. He's done it. For her, like, why should she just let him get away with it? It's crazy, bro. Why should she just let him get away with it? Poor Danae, man. Like, she's she's clearly lost in the source as well. And, like, you are allowed to forgive your partner if you want to for cheating on you, like, relationships. We're going to get yours, man. Fuck this. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna be on any high horses, like, right? Like, we've all we all know people who have who have gone back, like, family life, friends life, all that shit. We know we know all that stuff. We know how love what love really does to people and all of that stuff. So she, the the issue here isn't actually the fact that she's gone back to him. The issue is that his toxicity has just continued throughout this thing. Even like having her up in front of all these millions of people and exposing her to all of the people who are just like taking the piss out of her all day and every day because of how she dresses and the decisions that she's made in her life. He's exposing her to something that she really doesn't deserve to be exposed to. No, but that whole to. video is mad chat. If you are doing what you're doing, like you have to one up in front of the camera and be like, this is what I did. This is what I did. This isn't what we did together. This isn't a yeah. revelation that we reached as a pair, bro. Like, this ain't got nothing to do with wifey, you know? Like, you need to fucking but this, own this. This is the whole thing. Like, even the apology video was... So it's him grips in her hand for the purposes of his public image. But even during the video, he's like, there are things that are involved, such as having messages with other women. He basically says everything to contextualize what he did without actually saying that he fucked another woman whilst he was married. Like, even the apology video is bullshit. Yeah, man. It's shit chat, man. Fuck this guy. Don't cheat. Just leave. Just leave. Find someone else. If, you don't, if you're going to cheat on someone, just fucking leave. See, I, I'm not one of these people who even... I'm not even one of these people who even takes it takes that line because we don't know how it gets. Do you know what I mean? And I, again, this isn't about, like, whether or not you stay with somebody after they cheat. It's about how you own what you've done. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Right? If a woman wants to take back a man or a man wants to take back a woman because of infidelity... As she said, we weren't able to see it. Like you need to see a change in mentality. You need to see a, sh- a shift in that person. But that person has to handle that shit on their own. Sure. That's got to be independent of me. That's got to be independent of the person who's been cheated on, right? He brought her into that fucking whirlwind because as you say, his narcissism doesn't really allow him to take full accountability for what he's done. He's almost made her kind of complicit in the whole thing. Sure. And, this, this, this is, and that's it, fucking crazy that's when you deep it, bro. Yeah, I, like, like, I fully agree with you. The point... The point uh, point i was making wasn't about her or the post cheating it was pre-cheating like if you're gonna if you know you're gonna cheat on someone just don't do it like just yeah of course. break up with someone and go fuck him and go fuck over the fuck you want right but like when you're with yeah. someone and you're married or whatever like you've got responsibilities people man you'd be feeling yeah, yeah, yeah. You. You feel yeah, like it, go, it this, goes without saying it goes whole, without saying the point you, of the deal right yeah ideal situation goes without saying don't cheat like that goes without saying but what i'm saying is that cheating happens right cheating happens right so it's what happens after that if, if someone leaves fuck it do your thing some people have Barriers, they have absolute limits, right? Limits is the word I'm looking for. Some people have limits and they're like, if I ever get cheated on, there's no going back from that. Some people are like, you know, you hear, you hear like, like younger girls these days who are kind of just like, that's just going to be part and parcel of relationships. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I've, I've almost come to accept that that's kind of what happens. People like Derek Jackson don't fucking help. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, but some people have come to that almost resignation that that's just what it's going to be like because they've heard nothing else. Do you know what I mean? You, I hear, that, I you get- hear about more... Quavos and Sweeties, even even the long termers that we all had hope, high hopes in, like the friggin' Will and Jaders and stuff, like people, like not yeah, in, no, not I, in, I ain't get, nothing I sweet. Get. But the point I'm trying to make is, irrespective of all of that, it's kind of how you handle it, right? It's how you handle it. 
my biggest gripe with this fucking buffoon is that he brought his wife. He didn't even let her look at, he didn't even, and, and I, I don't want to talk, did, I don't even want to talk about yeah. how she looked, but he didn't even allow her to look at her most fly. No, 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 but he she, didn't even allow no, no, her no, to look at her most. No, 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 but that was her most fly. Have you, have you seen that IG? <laughs> I'm not doing this. No, that's magic. <laughs> yeah, no, you're obviously no, 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 no. Right. Big man ting. No, have you, have you, you seen right. her IG? Yeah, no, no you yeah. haven't. Bro, no. check out IG. That, that's that's her on a normal day. That's how she is. That is her on a normal day. To be fair, that is her on a normal day. Yeah, that's how that's her on a normal day. Bro. Okay, so maybe she was at her most fly, but she still shouldn't have been there. Yeah, cause fuck it, you, Derek. It should have been a solo statement. Yeah, because he's dragged he's dragged her into his apology, and it's not necessary because she wasn't complicit in the crime. That's bullshit. Think and about all the men. He- think about all the men who got the side eye and the no sex from their wife this week <laughs> because of you, buddy. Ah, uh, bro. Uh, and, and she looked. Look what he- you've done. And you can just see it. She she's looked hella awkward in it as well. well like, exactly, it, was she's like, fuming, it was actually man. scary. It was like she was like you can tell that like so you I'm can tell. On. Somebody who's just madly manipulated. Yeah, man. Like she basically has to sit there for his image. Do you think she really wants to sit there whilst her husband's explaining to the world that he's cheated on her? Like, it's embarrassing for her, right? It's bleak. Yeah, like, the whole thing is like, it doesn't for, add up. for his image, she has to be there for his forgiveness. Yeah, it doesn't add just, up. She could just leave. Toxic. Yeah, she could just release a statement. I knew. I forgave him. We're together, right? She doesn't have to be in oh, the video. The whole, like the whole video is fine. The way it's that he's all mad, forward, the way he's gripping her hand, the way that he's explaining stuff, the words that he uses, it's shit chat, man. It's shit chat. Fuck he's this all guy. crazy. Um, good luck to, to them both. I'm sure it will be a. Uh, a bestseller, um, whatever he decides to release. Um, I think, you know. Maybe you should fucking read it. I think he was out on these streets with a vengeance because, you know, he's just in the last few years overcome his his adolescence as a fat boy. He got a bit buff, got a bit of female attention and didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> it is what it is. He put his dick in it. You may be pretty on the outside, but are you pretty on the inside? <laughs> Work on your inside. I think it did work on someone's insights. I think that's the problem. Shit. That's it. Facts. Stay woke. <laughs> um, do we want to talk about Kill the Bill? Got a Kill Bill. <laughs> we could talk about Uma Thurman talk as well, well if you want. Thurman. Never mind. Kill, Let's talk kill, about Uma Thurman. Kill Bill is a great, great movie. What do you think of her toes? No. No? No, a bit too. The middle the ones, are, man the middle ones a bit too on long. Her toes is magic. Yeah, there's a scene with the toes, right? In what? the Kill Bill. Come Which on, bro. When she's in the... um, I was very high last night. No, nah, yeah, yeah. Her toes, are, her, t- her toes are all over Kill Bill. And I know zabi has got a thing for them things. I think that. her middle one's a bit too long. Yeah. I was Kill way, Bill and Kill Bill 2 are, I was are like... Way too high to They're realize. like my top three films. And they're not three. It's sour, isn't it? Kill Bill and Kill Bill 2. Bruv. They're not even the best Quentin Tarantino films. I didn't ask for that opinion, Johnny. Well, well, I'm going to give it to you anyway. Jackie Brown's an infinitely better film. They're completely different films. What's better? Mm, they're very independently good. <laughs> You've not watched Kill Bill? You serious? I haven't seen it in a long time. But I'm typing in Kill Bill Toes. You're Googling Kill Bill Toes? Yeah, to get that Uma scene. Thurman Toes is what you're looking for. I mean, Pulp Fiction's oh. also a better film. But why oh, no, no, yeah, no, even worse. Her, yeah, <laughs> but while you do that... <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? Her toes are ugly. Her, her middle one's long, but then all of her toes are longer than her big toe. So the alignment is just all off. What Let me see. Fuck? What the fuck? Let me see. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I know the thing is, that's, there, there's no, there's no like, I do not want to see that's this. That's how it is. I know what you mean. Yeah. No, I don't want to see it. I'm no, not no, looking. watch it. Watch no, it. You're, no, not, not you're not good on toes, no, are you? You don't I'm like not, toes. I'm not into feet. It's not my thing, innit? They have to look at them. What do you do with your own? Do you not just not look at them or what? Like, what I actually, what? I actually, you know what? Two twos. I'm going to make a confession. I'm going to be vulnerable. I actually filed my own toenails today. Why aren't you clipping them? Is that, is you know, that, I was is clipping, that a first time event? Because I, I was clipping my... Normally, I clip my toenails and I don't file them, innit? But I was like clipping my fingernails. I was fucking bored at work. Clip my toenails and I was like, well, I've used the file on my fingers. Let me just file my toenails. So I filed my toenails for the first time. Shiny, right? Smooth. Decent, decent. decent. Mm. You can like rub it at the top of a minute. Yeah. Man. Help with the touch of football. Go off, sis. <laughs> Are we doing Kill the Bill? Quickly. All right. Uh, would you want me to do it or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's been going on in Bristol? Oh, boy. Okay. So, following on from the last episode, uh, there was, which we actually missed because uh, it happened after the recording, but there was a vigil for Sarah Everard in Clapham. The police moved in with very heavy handed tactics. Uh, they broke up a, a protest. Well, they didn't really need to, and especially given the fact that in the week previously, the chief scientific officer had come out and said that actually gatherings of large people in outdoor scenarios have no evidence in widespread transmission. So the fact that the police went in because of coronavirus is complete bullshit. Um, they were just there to be heavy handed to break up a demonstration. And then people realized that a lot of the motivation behind this was because of 
the oncoming, or at least the culture that's allowing the police to do this is because the Home Office trying to push through the oncoming police crime and sentencing bill. And so Kill the Bill protest had been in reaction to um, the kind of wider um, connaissance or knowledge, I guess is the word, of this. Connaissance. Bill of this, but there isn't an equivalent Ooh. word in English, Sav. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. there isn't. All right, fine. So, um, so the. Um, so. Bristol is basically where the most active protests against the bill or the most active protests for the Kill the Bill uh, movement came up. And this is what the deal is basically like. So so the Tories have kind of realized that, like, even though they're basically fascists, they do need to pretend to be ecologically friendly because, like, we can be green fascists, basically. So, like, at the moment, the Conservatives, like, cumulatively wank over maybe 50 or 60 different pieces of socially repressive legislation. And so what they decided to do was to get like one soggy biscuit type of um, of legislation where they could come over a single 300 page document and that'd be better for the environment because there's fewer pieces of paper Which copied to, to receive it. And that bill is called the Police Crime and Sentencing Bill. And so there's a few things that go into the Police Crime and Sentencing Bill that you might have heard of. So one of them for example, is the removal of unauthorized, unauthorized encampments, which is why you will hear that they have been targeting gypsy and traveling communities. Another one, for example, is that they are going to ban protests if they are too loud or inconvenient. And that is basically the Wild. fucking point of a protest. Yep. But it's like, so, if, so let's say, like, if, let's pretend you're, you're a Tory and someone's like, we're going to like remove the gypsy camps. And you're like, oh, oh. and then you're like, well, we're going to actually ban all form of protest. And you're like, <sighs> and then they're like, well, actually you can get 10 years in prison for defacing a statue. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you give the whole Dr. Zoidberg, right? Yeah. This is like 300 pages of Tory socially repressive wank festation um, that bans protest and is deeply ironic for a party that spends all of its time going on television and on Twitter claiming that we're banning their freedom of speech. And in Primark. And and also spending a shit ton of cash on Primark and, on and Primark beautiful brows and, and beautiful brows and defying lockdown regulations. Yeah, um, in the highest forms of office. So eight hundred and fifty quid at Sports Direct. Sure, it's like on. I mean we've all done it, but like I, we're not all fucking. <laughs> that's a load of, that's a lot of mugs. Of, we're also not ministers of state. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like grow up. Um, so yeah, this kill the bill shit is basically like one. I mean, I, I hate. I, it's not like me to use hyperbole, but it is one closer step to fucking fascism, right? Like we've already got a manipulation of the press. We've already got a demonization of intellectualism in this country. We have attacking of educational institutions. We've got mass use of propaganda and an increase of nationalism. Now we're literally fucking banning protest you can ban a protest if it's too noisy mm. and this is very much in the nature of protest is to be disruptive right what kind of protest just kind of fucking follows the rules of the institution that they're protesting against it doesn't fucking make any sense Obviously. so the whole point of this is to subjugate free speech ironically as i've just said uh, and to stop any form of dissent against the government narrative and that's very dangerous for a hundred different reasons um the thing that actually upsets me like okay like the tories and i forget the tories because the tories are always going to be and they always have been and that's true to form the thing that upsets me is the Labour Party being so fucking inefficient in opposing this, right? Like, what is the point of the Labour movement if not to stand up for the right to dissent against the government? Bruv, we've had this conversation, right? It's fucking pointless. It's fucking pointless. And they, like, yeah. they don't... I, I, I think episode seven or eight, I disagree with your view on Keir because I was like, they're not doing policy, so it's not really their place. And your retort back to me was, but they need to have a policy in place or a what we would do um, stance. And with every big event that's taking place in the last few months, mm. the silence has become even more definite. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's bro, brutal. Like. So like shout out to, to one journalist on Twitter called Moya Lothian McLean. She wrote a piece for Galdem in like November, December. Yeah, and the title of the piece was "Keir Starmer is a wet wipe," and that's like basically ever since she wrote that, his image as a wet wipe has like snowballed, and she was pretty much fucking spot on. So I was pretty pro Keir Starmer coming in to start with. Like, I'm very anti Jez because he's fucking hopeless, and he gave the Tories an 80 seat majority. Um, but I thought like if we get this move back to a more popular version of Labour, then we might yeah. have a more effective opposition. Well, it just turns out that the bloke has actually got absolutely no interest in opposing the government like this this bill this ridiculous bill that bans protests and allows extremely dangerous police power or overreach of power the party was going to abstain it 
like what is the point of the labor movement if not to defend labor if not to defend the right to organize yep. if not to defend the right they mm. weren't even going to stand against yeah. it. they were going to abstain it and let the government pass it through so Why? i think as depressive as it is the tories are cunts it's expected but like the labor party is being woefully ineffective as a form of opposition and they need to be at the forefront of saying no actually you should be allowed to protest but why do you think why do you think it's happening do you think it's because we're so far away from a general election that Keir Starmer has this long-term strategy of steadying the boat and I don't know even to an extent shuffling the deck and addressing the personnel within the Labour Party first before he then goes on an onslaught against Tory policies do you no. think do you, what, what do you think it is do you think he's incapable of having an opposition or do you think that he is um, a secret agent so I think you have to, I have to I think you have to question his character and his stomach for the fight really like okay like if we're going to be very brutal about it how opposed or how far away politically are Boris Johnson and Keir Starmer probably not that far mm. probably not that far like Boris does the whole far right wing bluster but I can guarantee he doesn't give a shit yeah. about unemployed working class people in, in the north of England, right? Like they're both effectively liberals. Liberalism is an economic ideology and they might be at kind of differing ends of liberalism, but they're both basically liberals. Keir Starmer has had this reputation as a barrister and a cross-examiner and someone who stands up for rights, but ultimately the guy was the chief, um, chief prosecutor um, for the country. He's very much part of the legal establishment of this country. Boris Johnson is one of the leading journalists, part of the journalist establishment. They're not that massively different um, personally in terms of their politics. Fact of the matter is that the trajectory, expected trajectory of the economy, et cetera, um, and the Tories getting their unpopular tax policies out early doors means that by the time the next general election comes, you know, we're likely to be in a scenario where the economy is growing at a decent rate, yeah. where the jobless rate has come down. And everybody's going to fucking... And everyone's going to be thinking, oh, fucking hell, like that pandemic that they fucked up, that was four years ago. We don't really remember yeah, that. But yeah, what we do yeah. remember now is that there's jobs for everyone and the economy is growing at four or 5%, right? Facts. So yeah. now is the time for Keir Starmer to be hammering how badly the Conservative Party is managing everything. Because by the time we get to 2024... The Tories are probably going to be an upswing. But more importantly, there are also regional and uh, mayoral and by-elections to, ha to have between now and 2024. So there's yep. been a stepping down of a candidate in Hartlepool, for example, which is somewhere that should be textbook fucking Labour heartland up in the northeast. Mm. The Conservatives have got a pretty good chance of taking it. Mm. Right, because of maybe the Brexit swing or whatever. But the point is that you know this these are the, these are still the kind of the last bastions of areas uh, where organization and labor movement still have some kind of power and emphasis and what starmer has done is that unfortunately he has he's picked up all of the ugly sides mm. of new labor which is effectively political and economic liberalism but without any of the charm or any of the organization or any of the uh, energy mm. that unfortunately tony blair did bring yeah. the guy won Three elections on the balance. You can't say he was a shit politician because he did manage to get people on side. Keir Starmer doesn't have that touch. And it's it's especially dangerous at the moment. You know, you've got, I can't remember what the company was, but Marcus Rashford was due to speak to a company about the working conditions that they're- Deliveroo. Subject, was Deliveroo, they were. Was expecting to speak to Deliveroo about the working conditions that they're subjugating their workers to. And you think, right, well, fine. Maybe that should be the RMT or one of the unions, but at least it maybe definitely fucking should be the leader of the Labour Party addressing a company on the working conditions it's subjecting its employees to. Why is Marcus Rashford taking the lead on child food poverty and labour working conditions? Yeah, I was, and that, the leader of the Labour Party is nowhere to be fucking seen. That, that, labor, that delivery shit kind of took me by surprise with, with Marcus. Like, I don't know where it's come from. Well, he's branching out because we don't have a fucking opposition in this country. That's absolutely mad, bro, when you deep it. That's absolutely bonkers, yeah. bro. At least, the, um, at least the food situation was closer to home to him. Because of his, you know, his 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 upbringing and and his mum working X amount of jobs and him not having a great deal of food and having to go around to his neighbours to get meals and stuff, but this delivery stuff, yo, Marcus, first of all, I know this is not the conversation. Marcus is on a fucking mission and I love it. Well, I am up, here for it. Big him up. I mean, to the clearly we love lines. him here, innit? We love him here. Um, I'm a Liverpool fan. It pains me to say it, but we love him here, like to the end, innit? We ride for Marcus, but. It's so weird but like, how point, that's materialized in is, episode one. The point is, yeah. and I say this with all the love of my heart. The first person we mentioned yeah. on episode one. The point, and I say this with all the love of my heart, 
two twos. This should be out of Marcus Rashford's depth. Of course, this should not be within his bandwidth. Of this course. should be the this should the leader of the opposition should be leading the charge for a changing in working standards. And in fact, this should suit Kistar because the Supreme Court just a couple of weeks ago ruled that Uber has to treat their employees as employees. Yep. They're no longer contractors, which means that there is already legal justification. They, good politics would have been picking up on this energy and yeah. he's failed to do so. The guy is just, I don't know if it's because he doesn't want to or because he can't do it, but he's incapable of holding the government to account over yeah. its coronavirus handling, over its food policy because they were shy about that, that it's been incapable of holding it over this police crime and standard bill until there was a massive uproar and literally people burning bully vans. Yeah. And also this working stance, it just makes you point, realize what is the point, makes you think what is the point in having an opposition if they Good don't segue. oppose anything. Good segue. Did the people take it too far in Bristol? This, this, is a, this is the thing, right? So when you completely... Loaded question. When you completely... Very, but... You know. When you completely ban people's right to protest peacefully, peacefully, what do you expect them to do? What do you expect people to do? Like, okay, like... I understand that it's not ideal that people burnt bully vans and people, there wasn't really riots. But the thing that's more concerning is actually the BBC came out and said that coppers suffered broken bones, et cetera, et cetera, and left that up on the website. It was then literally proven, confirmed by even the Somerset police a week later that no coppers suffered broken bones. That's quite literally fake news from the state media outlet, which I think is very worrying, quite dangerous. Did people take it too far? What does too far mean? If you're not even allowed to protest, then organizing in a group of 30 people is taking it too far. Facts. I but mean, we could we could do more on this, but it's just the burning jarring, of the, the, the bully van burning. Yeah, that was that was the just, vandalism. Yeah, I mean the the, the, the smashing the bully, down of buildings, etc. Right? The, 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 the bully van taxes. burning, though, so the bully that, van burning that, that, like, that was more dangerous than anything because if that if that van blows up. They're probably going to have more of an impact on. Okay, but there's no coppers in the van, well. right? There's no coppers in the van. Let's say no, it's I'm, talk, I'm talking about. I'm talking. If, if a van blows up and you're in close proximity, bro, yeah, there's going to be innocent people. Yeah. That's going to be okay. No, hold on. So the people well. who are around the bully van would have seen people setting it on fire. That means they're somewhat in agreement with it happening because the coppers have fucked off. Either way, if you're it, stupid enough to negligent. stand next to a bully van, either way, I think it's quite. Ne- burned, I think it's quite negligent kind of like, to even do that action. To be honest with you. I don't know. Thuggery might, and disorder might, by a minority will never be tolerated. Name that quote. Is that pretty to tell? Ding, uh, ding, bro, ding, ding, chief, ding. Chief dickhead. Chief dickhead of the nation. Honestly, I've just got such little time. It's fine. We don't need to get into that. Anyway. But yeah, for real. Um, Even before you get into the whole like banning the refugees coming here. Da, 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 like it's just fucked. Yeah. It's fucked. It's brutal. Like, and two twos. Like I say this like kind of as a, as a Jew or whatever. But like if my family had left France, my family left France and went to Venezuela in World War Two. But if my family had left France and come here under the rules that Priti Patel wants to implement, they'd have been turned away. Yeah. And that's very dangerous. It, it, there is no such thing as being illegal in international law. It doesn't exist. So the yeah. idea that we can just turn away asylum seekers and refugees and send them back to France or whatever, it, it's totally ideologically led. Fuck the Tories. That's what's up. I don't know why this has got me, um, I don't know why this has got me thinking about Shamima again. You man seen uh, the recent pictures of her trying to look like a snack out there in Syria? With the glop. Yeah, it's kind of my chat. With the glop, with no, with no hijab and... What, she, what did bro, she say she's she watches? Trying to, she's trying to glow up, bro. What did she say she watches? She's going to have a TikTok account soon. She watching something on telly. What was she saying that she was watching? she been watching like, I don't know. <laughs> she said something like really funny, like Only Fools and Horses or some shit. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. She wants that citizenship. She wants that citizenship yeah. so bad. She was like, "Look at me, I done glowed up. I'm ready to come back to home." Watching only fools and horses is a foolproof way to get in green. Facts, Facts. Like, mate. You Facts. know, I love. That's probably one of my top five shows. So right. shout, again, shout out Max because every this morning I wake up and he's watching. This is actually um. Morning. This is um, <laughs> really? yeah, every morning. This time next year, rest in peace. Rest in peace, pops. But I never got into it. He he watched only fools and horses a lot. I never got into it. Oh, I so love jokes. it. I never got. Into, I, like, another, I loved it from a kid. It's another one of those things I just missed out of childhood. This time next year, Rodney. We'll become millionaires. <laughs> yeah, man. Bonnet de douche, Rodney. Bonnet, yeah, Bonnet de douche. douche. Yeah, I didn't do it. <laughs> Brilliant bro. show. Monge too. I was watching like Sister Sister and shit. I don't know. Now only only for horse horses. Yeah, it's a, it's an elite show. I I need to go back and watch it. It's Even probably on like UK Bacon Gold or some shit. Decent. Anyway, huh? Even Shamima Bacon watches it, so it must be decent. But did you see her though? Why is she trying out here, bro? Why is she trying to look sexy? Yeah, and shit? I, I'm pretty sure she had highlights in as well. Why is she trying to look sexy? The bro? highlights were mad. I don't think she was trying to look sexy. She looked pretty like waved out in Primani, but like the highlights were mad chat. And then she's on, just no, it was got... a glop though. Was you can look sexy in that shit, bro. You she, can look she sexy She did in have the, like the look 2008 I'm going to Oxford Street sunglasses though. It's kind of mad. So what you're saying is you did The pose, everything was just haram, fam. You didn't... 
<laughs> and said, it I really stuck was. through the wall. No, she's ready to make. She, she, she's ready to make enemies, fam, with the other side. It's all fucking mad. Um, where do we go with this whole protesting? Is the bill for the listeners? Is the bill confirmed, signed, still delivered? Is no. it what's, so the, what's the next to, step? So it's gone to committee stage where it's going to be reviewed, etc. So basically, the government have realised that they've kind of fucked this one up a little bit. So they're going to push it into they push it down the road a few months yeah so we're gonna hear it come up again uh, basically when they get another pickup in their popularity and the economy's growing they'll does, try and push it back through does again. kira have an opportunity to amend or to influence what's been written in any way yes yeah, so this is what committee stage is for is they get scrutinized by cross-party right. uh, committees etc etc he needs to be lobbying his mps on those committees to propose amendments he needs to um, he needs to propose his own am amendments. He needs to get David Lammy, who's the Shadow Justice Secretary, yeah. to propose sufficient amendments. There are there is quite literally more mentioning of statues than there is violence against women in yeah. the bills. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. Which is just mad chat. So he needs basically what Kiss Starman needs to do is be a fucking politician. This is all politics. Yeah. Right. Law, unfortunately, is a function of politics, and Keir Starmer is shit at politics, and that's why the Tories have got the will and the momentum to even have the audacity to push something like this through Parliament. He needs to be politically savvy on a legal sense you also need to be politically savvy on a media momentum campaign sense i'm gonna need another song from you man that you'd sing to sweetie no shit i need another one sweet mother i never forget you is she your mum all the things i don't uh, is she is she your mum that's no. a weird song to sing sweetie bruv i mean it's just it's just an appreciation of of women in general no 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 no. i'm just letting no. her know i'm not gonna cheat on Zavi, her you got one lovers and friends Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, dun, I feel know you dun, for a dun, long dun, time, Shawty, but never's on your mind, Shawty. Oh, no, can I, can but I tell me something again. in you, Shawty? Oh, hey, <laughs> can I can I change my tell sweetie song? Yeah. No, no, no. You got that, bro. Hey, sweet mother was weird, isn't it? Yo, it's Why weird. But you know weird? what? He's gonna hold that. She's not your mum. You know what? Anyway, but it's not just four mothers. You better mind that we don't name one of these chapters. Or maybe John, Johnny's thinking he's thinking 10, 15 years in the future when no, sweetie's no, 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 giving no, him a couple picnics. Yeah, but would you would you think in this day and age would you really? Sing that song to your baby mum. I don't know, Sweet bro. mother? No. no, 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 that's weird. Johnny, you got one chance to, you know. You got what? Yo, rectify it, please. You know what I mean? Quick, quick. What you got for us? Let me take countdown. you to the movie, Shore. Come be allowed. my baby. What is Let this? Let me take you to the movie, Shore. How can you forget this <laughs> YouTube know. classic, bruv? I don't know. You're going to have to check that one. Oh, shit. We'll play it. Or, I, I can't think of any on top of my head, but just basically any T-Pain song. She brought us drinks to drink. We drunk them, got drunk. <laughs> At the bar, tender. This doesn't fit though. Doesn't no, fit. But I think, lovers, I think lovers and friends just move on. But oh, I go with Mrs. Officer. I, do, I think I'll give her a better little way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, that's a banger. That's a banger. It's not. Is it? Is it? It's, it's not for Sweetie though. Why not? We got to talk about NFTs, man. You know what? Yeah, NFTs are mad chat because they're fucking stupid. That's it. We mad need to. Right? No, no, no. We got to set. Come on, we got to do. We got to set up our subjects a little bit better for the listeners. We got listeners at the end of the day. Yeah. NFTs. Who wants to explain what these motherfucking things? Oh, are? you can run this one, Zef. All right. So basically, just picture an NFT like a an art related Bitcoin, essentially. It's like a so, dig digital token. Right? Yeah, digital token basically. So you're art. not actually owning whether it's art, whether it's a. Uh, it's it's basically intellectual property, right? Right, and um, from artist from artist perspective, they're able to wrap their piece of art or mint it, as you would say, and sell it on in a, a with a blockchain effect, whereby they still keep track of and still have ownership of their work. So even if that piece of art, that digital art, which is not tangible, mm -hmm. it's all like all in the digital world, intellectual property, whatever, they're able to sell it on, but still have. Um, royalties in a sense from mm -hmm. those sales. It's a hot thing at the moment. It's a it's an alternative investment. Yeah. Um, but to be honest with you, there's like two things about it. I think from a creative from a creative standpoint, not necessarily artists, but whether it's artists, uh, somebody who's in the tweet nation or whatever, the, 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 what do you call it, the tweetiverse or Twittersphere, the yeah, Twittersphere, right. or um, you can own scenes of a sports. Um, that's the NBA sports one. match NBA yeah. match. Yeah. So, but that's it's actually something that's it's, it's something that I, I believe is um, 
it's it's booming at the moment and it's got a lot of eyes on it. But that's the same thing. That's the same thing with anything that's considered as a lucrative investment. Yeah. Um. But the, what the things I don't get about NFTs is the fact that you're actually getting so hyped over something that you own, but you it's not actually physical, it's digital, right? Yeah. yeah. From an asset perspective, okay, cool. There might be some yield in it, but in the reality is you're just buying something you've never seen. But why is this why is this important or why is this interesting for artists? You're an artist yourself. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily apply to to music as much. It should, but all the examples it will get there though, yeah, all it, the examples would... that I've heard personally um, are around art and not so mm. much music. Music is obviously my forte. Um, for why is it interesting for artists? For many reasons. One, where there was a there was a goal in a sense to be to be signed to a gallery in a sense to picture a gallery like the same way as you, uh, artists will see a record label um, where they'll also take hefty commissions from their work and there'll be some sort of um, stress on the demand for mm -hmm. them to produce that work. They have full ownership over it. And again, once they mint, as I will say, where you package your art to be ready for blockchain and be ready for an NFT purchase or NFT auction, they have ownership they have ownership of their work from start to literally it's endless ownership so even if for example you johnny you buy one of my art pieces mm -hmm. you buy new shapes but the digital piece of it mm -hmm. you have ownership of that even if you sell it to richard right i still have some sort of share within that yeah and then you would also have some share yeah, within that. So, as as well. that, so, so the the originator so, so of the you, art yeah. and the official owner of the art benefit from the reselling yeah. of that art. So ultimately, the AI, um, the uh, IP, I should say, not AI, the IP that is associated to Zabi as the artist is locked in forever. And if you you actually benefit both you as the owner of the original copy and Zabi as the artist who created it, you actually own that thing officially. So you benefit from the resale market in many respects. Yeah, all right. So because you can drive up or if your things, the things that you create build up value, that's okay because you are yielding something from that increase in value as is the artist. So maybe- worth, Is that right? Yeah. Maybe worth explaining NFT stands for- Non-fungible non tokens, tokens, which so is- is it not <laughs> not catchy? It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not, so it's it not creates, exchangeable. So it, crea it, it creates. It basically creates an identifier for a single piece of digital content. Be that art. Be that, for example, Jack Dorsey's first tweet, Mad. which has been sold as an NFT. Mad. Be that a specific dunk in the NBA, which is one of the more kind of liquid arenas for trading yeah. of NFTs, is NBA moments. Uh, but it creates a digital key for a specific piece of digital content which then trades through the blockchain mechanism and uh, creates a audited trail of transaction and ownership. Um, the idea is that I buy a piece of art from, let's say, Zavi. Yeah. And in 10 years, Zavi, God willing, blows up and becomes this enormous artist. If inshallah. I, inshallah. Inshallah. I buy, a piece of, I buy an NFT off one of Zavi's paintings. I own the digital rights to that painting. Uh, but I bought it for a thousand quid. Now, Zavi becomes a multi-millionaire artist. I that's could then weird. sell that piece of art for 10 million quid. Mm -hmm. Not the physical piece, but the digital version of it. And that's kind of the idea of NFTs. But it's, it's actually mad chat when you think of it. Yeah, it's bizarre. But the things are like, I, I find it, I find it like weird and pervasive for a few different reasons. One is because it's, I just, I'm not a buyer of the whole Bitcoin blockchain thing in general. I yeah. just structurally think it's bullshit. And in fact, the, BIS came out this week and said that Bitcoins have failed the test as a currency. So that whole fucking thing's going to collapse anyway. But anyway. they get regulated quick. They're going to get, it's just going to collapse. Anyway, yeah. whatever. I do actually probably, I've probably got more time for NFTs in art as a technology I do Bitcoin. Um, because I do understand the concept that it is kind of backed by something or if not backed by something, it's representative of something. But I think that like stuff, for example, where people have sold someone's first tweet, like, okay, let's say for example, that Xavi invented Twitter and I buy Zavi's first tweet. Well, I could just go on Zavi's page. Yeah. Print it. Go all the way down. <laughs> frame it. Print that shit, yeah. frame it, and look at it every fucking day. And who gives a shit whether or not it's the original? Like mm. it, it, like, it does what, strike what, me as being like a mean? millionaire geek. I guess it comes from like, I guess it comes from a perspective of like more from like a, um, 
on a corporate level, let's say, for example, um, Jack, what? Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey's first tweet was using a film. Right. My man who owns digital rights to that tweet yeah, gets, the gets same. a slice out or has a right to basically negotiate. But say, I guess the, the tricky yeah. thing about NFTs is who and how we decide what a collectible is, right? Picassos, Basquiat's, all of these things that we would consider to be traditional collector's items are now being replaced by things like <laughs> tweets. Yeah. And that seems strange given yeah. that it, especially in the art world there's a difference between the originals and the prints and so on and so forth and the yeah, value exactly. associated with those things with tweets the original that you can access is, is what i can access so what from a different exactly ip so, it's, it's, so how is that valuable and how is this gaining two three four million dollars worth which jack dorsey gave to charity he's going to give to charity by the way but how are these things amassing this cult-like collectibles item tag without just being uh, like some sort of like you, to be really rich person's you, affair for the geeky. To be honest with you, I, um, That's what it is. my opinion on it, like I've looked into NFTs quite a bit. I may approach it in the future, you never know. But for now, I personally think that it, it sort of goes along with the same theme that we've been speaking about in the pot previous episodes from like a GameStop mm -hmm. perspective and stuff. There's a lot of hype and there's a lot of marketing free marketing mm -hmm. from the world of social media mm -hmm. that's bigged it up and, mm -hmm. it's, and it's probably increased the demand of it i was having a chat with it with a couple of artists pretty seasoned artists as well and mm -hmm. we've all come to the same conclusion whereby we think that the the genesis of buying art mm -hmm. and like investing in art has more longevity personally i feel like as quick as this has come it's probably as quick as it's gonna, gonna go, go. Yeah. like um I just don't know how much more upside there is to it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a great story. I, yeah. I, I think it's revolutionary yeah. um, from a different perspective. I know the music industry will probably benefit from it more because again, you're buying the rights of music. You don't actually, you can't see music. You can hear music. You know what I mean? You can feel music. You can't mm. actually tangibly hold it, which is, a, I guess that could be revolutionary for the artist's in the in that sort of scene more mm. than the I don't see it, bro. As a musician myself, as an art, I don't see it. I don't see it being that that valuable. But Johnny, what you well, I mean, say? I, I just don't like. Based for me, like the reason that this doesn't apply to music is because there is already the concept of a master. Yeah. In music, exactly. Right. So, like, where there isn't the concept of a master beyond the physical piece versus print, there is already a precedent in the. the There's a hierarchy the set music, already, but there yeah. is already a precedent for the digitization of existing content right yeah. if taylor swift's uh manager owns the rights to her records yeah. then any digital representation is accounted for by his ownership of the master so this same precedent can't work in the music sphere i don't think yeah. it's going to translate across but, but it's it an important conversation bro like it, it does bring up the conversation that needs to be had about ownership and finding new creative ways to value what artists do it started with Napstar, Steve Jobs pretty much put a nail in the coffin of the music industry. And ever since then, anybody who is a creator, and it's not just about music, it's all different creative lanes, but anybody basically who is a creator has basically had to live and accept the fact that much of what they create for the most part is of zero value or is of a minimal, very limited value. Um, so I'm actually in principle for NFTs because if it means that artists have their art or their creativity certified in a way and they they have an audit trail or an ecosystem around everything that they create musically or creatively then i'm all for it artists creatives need to get paid more and if we can continue to find creative ways to do that whether it's nft or the next fad then i'm all for it bro like did you man see the um the the news that came out this week was that the music industry Right, the music industry revenue hit its highest level since 2002. Jeez. Now, clearly, we were all home last year, so it was more of a streaming-led recovery. But imagine that, right? You're, you're you're reading an article that basically said total revenue increased 7.4 percent to 21.6 billion dollars in 2020, according to IFPI, which is the global music trade body. Mm -hmm. So that's its sixth consecutive year of growth, right? But the highest since 2002. Then you see, then you dig deeper into the article and it's like the drive was 
pretty much attributed to the streaming platforms. So Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, right? The number of paid for subscriptions climbing 18.5% to 443 million by the end of last year. Then you dig a little bit deeper. How much do you reckon Spotify are paying per stream That's for any artist? Like 10p? 10p. Half a penny. So Spotify generally pays between, and this is in dollars, 0.003 oh, per stream. Wow. What? So you have to stream 250 times before you earn a dollar. Holy shit. Right? So that's nuts. What artists are paid, and we've touched upon this when we did the Taylor Swift thing, mm. what artists are paid per Spotify stream depends on your distribution channel. So whether that's you're directly an independent artist going directly to Spotify or if you're doing that through a record label. Yeah. Um, and of course your listening base, because if you're Taylor Swift and you get hundreds of millions, if you're Drake, you get hundreds of millions of streams, that shit adds up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But if you are a small scale artist who does London circuits. Do you know what I mean? They do a couple pubs in Camden. They do a couple pubs in Bow, et cetera, et cetera. It fills them out every time. It has a steady, strong base. That's basically, when you're doing those performances, that's really your only form of income. Mm -hmm. Unless you're doing merchandise nuts, after bro. your shows. Mm -hmm. So That's why I'm, my shows are so important as well. Bro, it's, it's, it's completely, completely fucked up. I ride for anything that sees the artists potentially get paid more. It's worse, bro. Like Spotify isn't even the worst i saw a thing the other day because obviously you have to understand that like when artists have uh their music up it goes to like spotify these are amazon music apple music tidal rhapsody all these other places all of them have various different pay streams so some offer a little bit more on the on the of a fraction than others but ultimately it's an ecosystem whereby the shareholders in companies like spotify mm -hmm. are actually the record labels yeah yeah so, yeah. so it creates this, this, this really, really weird, weird chain whereby I am universal. Drake is my artist. When Drake releases, he has to be on the front of Apple Music. He has to be on the front of Spotify because everybody has to see his music because we need the streams because we need to, we need to get a return. Sure. Yeah. So it's squeezing out anybody who isn't big. And yeah. that happens in the art world. That happens in the music world. And if we have something, you know, organic, if I'm making music and I'm building up a fan base, small, small. If Zavi starts in art a year ago and he's building up a fan, ba fan base day by day, we need new ways to monetize that shit yeah. that takes out the over-aggressive middlemen. But I still don't get, just on your first statement that you said, yeah? Mm. Like how this has been the what the best, or yeah. this has been the best year for him. Yeah. Like if there's no shows involved, yeah. that's a lot of streaming, bro. That's a lot of streaming. And that's the thing. It goes directly to the well, streaming platforms. Everyone, who then, everyone jogging and listening to music. and Yeah, everybody was listening to music more because you're at home more and you're doing exercise more. And if you can't go to see your artists, you're going to listen to their new music or their old music. I listened to... Uh, 2020, I was nostalgic as fuck listening to all of the stuff I grew up on. Yeah. Like streaming went through the roof last year. Frank Ocean probably like, but, made bank. Yeah, but what good <laughs> is it? But what good is it if the music industry is going here, but the amount that artists are getting paid is like completely flatlining? Like mm. you see Spotify paying... You see Spotify paying like nine upwards of nine figures to podcasts because even they don't necessarily you could argue, see the value in music as a commodity anymore. They've shifted their focus. Artists are releasing less albums. F like fewer of your, your, fewer of your favorite artists are doing regular albums. You just mentioned Frank Ocean. Like when did Blonde come out? Time ago, time Maybe ago. ago. He has no incentive. What's, what's the incentive? You release an album last year, 2020, all you get is streams. You can't go on the road. And this is why we're gonna, when I mentioned the whole thing about Drake, right? Universal are going to have to break bank to keep him. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to break bank. It's going to be the biggest record deal you ever see, right? You ever see if he decides that he wants to go independent or starts hinting that he may want to because, yeah, if he goes independent, the money goes to him directly. Universal don't benefit from having Drake on their roster anymore. And then we have a completely reshaped music industry and you f you have everybody following Drake's lead. They'll write, they'll write out their contracts. And even if you're a two chains, you got a fan base, drop your album. People can just, just buy your shit, which is kind of where I need to leave this. If you are 
a fan of an independent artist, stream that shit. <laughs> when you go out for a day, when you go out to work for a day, mm. leave their fucking album playing on repeat. For real. Just fucking do that shit. And this like, podcast as well. Yeah, and this podcast. Do your research into who is who has a middleman, so who's on a label and whose money is essentially going to get diluted. And yes, stream them. Do what you can, like whatever. But the people who you know in your life who are independent creatives, mm. do a little bit more. You have to do a little bit more. They're literally, they're finding really humble ways, really quiet ways of saying, yo, like we're creating amazing stuff for the listeners, but we're not getting a great deal back. And the minute you have creatives not creating anymore, it's a sad fucking world, bro. Yeah. Hey, really the answer to this. And if we, and I agree with you that artists do need to have greater control over their content and do yeah. need to have greater um, ownership over the monetization. The answer to that is, as we saw, I guess, 10, 15 years ago now in Hollywood, when all the writers went on strike yeah. and the Screen Actors Guild said, well, we're not going to put any more content out until you lot pay us properly. Yeah. And again, the answer, as with fucking everything, to people being paid properly is to organize labor. Yeah. It's not to digitize common experience. It's not to create a bizarre yeah. crypto copy of something that you already put your hard work into. Yeah. Why yeah. do you have to set a digital copy of something that you can print and we can all own physically? I don't no. know. I don't know a creative. I don't know a single creative who isn't criminally underpaid and undervalued. For real. So the answer is... I don't is, know one. So the answer is organize. Yeah. Organize. None of us... Do you know what, Oxo? Yeah. None of us are doing a fucking show in your gallery until you pay us properly. There you go. Yeah. Do you know what, Camden it. Roundhouse? It's all across the spectrum None of us well, are getting on stage until you pay us properly. Pay us. It's not about digitized We don't want to do shit for the exposure, because my G. <laughs> fundamentally, and this is where I'm going to... This is where I'm going to get a little bit Marxist, and I'm sorry, but I'm not. But this is... NFTs is basically just another way to monetize your labor. This you content creators are putting shit out that other people are going to commoditize, repackage and sell on forward. You're not going to get rich off it. Okay, you might have some royalties on each transaction, but let's say that you've sold something that you sold for 10 grand, it's then worth a million quid. What, are you going to make like 20 grand commission when it sells for I don't a know the I don't know the pay structure. That's what but I need whatever, to learn a bit more. But you're not going to make yeah, the 10 yeah, million yeah. when it sells on again. Of course. Right? You are going to make more money from the offset if artists and musicians and whatever kind of content organize unless to of course they're the whole... paid properly from the get-go. Yeah. I mean, you're just giving the... another asset class to the investor class and that's mm. not healthy. I feel you. I feel you. No, but that's, that's, you know, look, do your research on NFTs. It's, it's very interesting. Um, it's tough. It, we need to find ways of monetizing what we create It's not it's better. Not like, it, look, podcast, bro. Like, and we're going to end on this. Like, podcast, it's a completely new industry. Like, I was saying to you, man, or maybe it was my brother I was saying it to. I've, I've recorded more in podcast hours than I, than I have in, in music hours in terms of released. Mm. I've released more podcast hours than I have music hours. So mm. technically, everything that I've ever created, which has earned me money musically, podcasting should really earn me more. Really. Yeah. Um, given the, the, the range of things that we talk about, given how much it takes to do this, et cetera, et cetera. But this is a industry in itself, a new industry. I know that the Joe Rogans and all this other stuff have distorted what this industry is worth or what mm. this, this art form is worth. But we still don't know really what this is all worth. We don't. So we need to find active ways of monetizing or having some sort of index, some sort of way of ascertaining what this shit costs. Mm. Like you could argue that we are bringing X amount of people to Spotify. I mean, clearly I wouldn't make a strong argument about that, innit? Because Spotify- We do numbers. We do numbers, but, not, numbers. but you could argue that we bring, or we, let's say, let's not say we bring people to, but we to keep Spotify, people but we Spotify, might right? keep people. The people listen to Spotify. Spotify. And listen Apple. To our show. And Apple. You feel me? So, so it's like it definitely sounds. So how do we? Yeah, so unless you got decent SoundCloud <laughs> followers, yeah, 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 yeah. And, no, and nobody's. But, yeah. good. but do you feel me though? How do we? Mon how do you monitor? How do you go to a Spotify and say, "I bet the reason why X Y Z aren't leaving is because of us. We deserve a bit of the bread." And, po and Spotify could basically just say, "Nah, G." And that's the problem. The creators are basically bottom of the food chain. They, we, we are bottom of the creative food chain. The creators. It's mad, bro. So this is basically where you get where you end up with like a Joe Budden going to Patreon argument. Yeah, like yeah, if we, yeah. Like if we keep this specific to, to to podcast, but this is an example of where people have organised to say, look, I'm not doing Spotify anymore. I'm yeah. not doing Apple Music. I'm not yeah. being paid properly. They've yeah. organised and gone with a platform that pays their labour yeah. better. Yeah. 
creating NFTs of you listening to Joe Budden isn't going to make Joe Budden any money. Yeah. And Joe Budden may be selling a little slice of his show is also not really the answer. Yeah. He's gotten better by going to a platform that pays him better. That's as a product of, you know, seeking value and organizing his time properly. Yeah, for real. It's all good talk, man. I love that. Um, I actually want to finish up on uh, just, just a salute to, uh, to, to one of the greatest footballers to ever grace a football pitch. Uh, I know Johnny isn't isn't feeling this right this, now. This is my Marcus Rashford moment. And uh, yeah, is... exactly. I, I, I respect that, Johnny. <laughs> I respect that for real, for real. And this, like... legend, this legend happens to be half Martinican. Okay, oh. okay, of course. I hate him even more. <laughs> nah, but like we got a shout out to Thierry Henry. Like today, um, just before we started recording, he dropped an announcement on Twitter basically saying, Hi guys, from tomorrow morning, I will be removing myself from social media until the people in power are able to regulate their platforms with the same vigor and ferocity that they currently do when you infringe copyright. Mm -hmm. The sheer volume of racism, bullying and resulting mental torture to individuals is too toxic to ignore. There has to be some accountability. Mm -hmm. It is far too easy to create an account, use it to bully and harass without consequence and still remain anonymous. Until this changes, I will be disabling my account across all social platforms. I'm hoping this happens soon. This, as well as a white guy from San Marino going on his knees against England yesterday and putting up the fist for black power, really does put that Wilfred Zaha shit into perspective, for doesn't real. it? <laughs> for real. It really does. For real. For real. As Bob Dylan said, the, 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 wind, the, the winds, they are changing. Yeah, right? bro. This is what we need. I want... Every single footballer, every single high profile black person needs to get off Twitter ASAP. Organize. Instagram, Organize. all of it. Leave. Leave now. It's, it's, this is dumb at this point. It's Stop dumb. Stop kicking ball. It's Fuck dumb. Stop kicking ball. Like, if you want to make a real, real yeah. statement of it. Rian Brewster, who is 19 years old, ex Liverpool player, plays for Sheffield United, who's had a, a horrible time since he moved um, from Liverpool to Sheffield United because they're about to get relegated. Barely played, like, but when he did play, didn't have a great deal of luck. Hasn't scored in his first season. Racist abuse. He's 19. 19. Like, get off. Let's get off. Let's see what really, really happens. The corporate world only starts to move the needle when there's money about to be lost. Vote with your wallets, man. Let's vote with our motherfucking wallets. There's absolutely no excuse. We were talking about this before, Johnny. Did I tell you this, Zab? So when we played... Uh, Earth Evil, shout out Route 73. Yeah. When, shout out Route 73. when we played Always. Earth Evil Always. at the end of episode six, the Christmas special, and I uploaded it to YouTube, they didn't rip it down, but I got a flag. That little 30 seconds that I played of Earth Evil at the end of our, the new music segment mm -hmm. at the end of episode six. And because of that, I can't, we, if we wanted to, not that we get the views, if we wanted to, I couldn't monetize that video because of that snippet. They picked it up like that. that I got but, yeah, but yeah, any, any idiot... Any idiot can just jump on social media with no verification, no yeah. auth authentication, and just start racially abusing people. Whenever there is money at play, people move different. So let's fuck with some money. I'm, I mean, I, I'm down for profile verification on places like Twitter and how Facebook. We, cetera, how, cetera. How, how are they justifying not doing it so at the this argument, point? So the argument against it is that it would infringe on privacy and it also well i'm more actually privacy is shit chat but the argument is that like i don't want to give my personal information to these types of companies well like i'm sorry but if you don't think it goes back to like people think like the vaccine they're going to implant a trip and track uh, implant a chip and track you but if you don't already think that your phone isn't tracking you <laughs> where you go in the first place you're <laughs> fucking moron but we've already lost like, that what, we've already lost that battle bro <laughs> more importantly like two twos when you fucking signed up for your greg's membership card you had to provide your address anyway <laughs> wait the, so Greg, like, the greg's yo, have a leave, membership yo, card yo leave greg's alone please so, <laughs> no so, do they have a membership card because if they do it. I'm getting one. Yeah, they got that. They got that. Subway, Subway. Shout, Subway. Out Shout, Shout out Greg's on Roman Road. Shout out Greg. Shout out Greg's on Roman Road. Two twos. How many bookie shops and websites have you given your address over to to sign up for a young ten percent discount? Well, all the raffle, all the raffles anyway. I did. Bruv. Come on, bruv. Like this argument that I, no, not gonna, like you can't tell me that Greg's have got better IT security than Google yeah. and Twitter and like I'm just not buying it. It's shit chat. Yeah. If I think that if you want to go on these websites, then fundamentally the way that the world is moving as we move into the digital age our presence in the digital world is just as real as our presence in the real one and, and certainly as behavior on twitter shows our behavior in the digital world is as impactful 
as our behavior in the real one. Delete them tweets. You, you couldn't you couldn't run up to Thierry Henry and start calling him all kinds of things under the sun in real life without getting into trouble. So why should you in the digital world? And yeah. I, I don't think that there's I don't think there should be as such a distinction legally between who we are in real life and who we are digitally because they're both expressions of of our personalities. Shout out Thierry, bro. Like, I mean, I hope to see this last. The problem is, is that there are some technical, uh, some technical considerations with regards to like leaving social media because it's either a thirty or a ninety day window. It's a thirty day window. Yeah, where, where you have to return or your or your things, or your things like really gone. Oh shit! I might be. <laughs> so buy- he may, yeah, he may be I'm, back on day thirty might, just I'm, to log in. I might be buying his handle. I'm gonna sell yes. that as an NFT, man. Fuck you, man. <laughs> he might log in like he might log in like something and just cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One knee slide at White Hot Lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, but for real, like we need to see more of this. Um, I hope footballers follow. I've never understood, and this is just me. If I ever reach a level of wealth that is along the lines of a Thierry Henry or whoever, bro. I would Chilling. never, bro, I would never have social media. Are you mad? I'd be ghosting. If I did have one, I'd be ghosting like a motherfucker. But do you think I'm having a social media platform? For what now? For what? I'm in the real world doing real things. I'm Thierry Henry, yeah? If I'm not like managing a club, I'm like assistant manager to the second best club in the uh, international club in the world. Like my state, I'm state, my status is solidified. I'm one of the greatest in the industry that I was in. Like, what do I need socials for? Yeah, bro. Like what? Like what? Jay Z, man, you want to see what's going on? Like what Jay Z says. I want to show support to friends or whatever. Like just because ghost. I just do a ghost account. Honestly, like Jay Jay Z says, ain't on the gram. They record who I am. Yeah, there's another song on uh, on Magna Carta where he's like. When I was talking Instagrams, the last thing you wanted was your picture snapped. And he was just talking about Instagrams, like grams of Coke. I didn't realize that. Bro. 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 I didn't realize that. Jay's another level, bro. This, 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 is, why, this is why. When I was talking Instagrams, the last thing you wanted was your picture snap. Huh? Ooh. Can we just end the episode Ooh, here? Babe. I didn't realize that, you know. Babe. On that note. No, but for real, this has been great. Um, but let's wrap it up there. I quite like these sudden endings and we don't have any new music. Has anything come out? No. I'm still listening to Leave the Door Open, bruv. Would you leave the oh, no, door no. Shout out, open? Shout out. I'm going to shout out the Route 73 the people them again because Eni's got a new single coming out. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out, out Eni, which we can't always. play because YouTube bugging. Because they're going to fucking kill us. <laughs> but we'll, we'll ha- I'll shout Asher. He might let us play it next time. Yeah, I'll yeah, tell yeah. you what song I do like though. It's um, Skepta with this guy that sounds like Wizkid, but it's not Wizkid. It's oh, J5. 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 That's yeah, 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 yeah. J5. Yeah, but is the, the, the artist on there? It's not J5. It's, um... Oh, it's one African geezer. I don't know. But it's J5. J5. It's from it's J5's called, upcoming okay, album. Rema. Yeah, Rema's. Rema's. Do maybe. Do maybe. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, it's that a banger. It's a banger. Um, That's a great song. On repeat. So yeah, check that. Check out Any's new thing. Check for us. Always. We love you. We out. Bye. Bye.